as it looked like the Orioles were on their way to a W. Evaldo Jimenez, an outstanding start with 11 strikeouts in five plus innings of work. But last night, the bullpen couldn't hang on. And for the 12th time, the Orioles had a blown save, third fewest in the American League. Tonight, they will try and rebound. Dylan Bundy will be on the mound. Once this year, he has had four consecutive W decisions. He'll try and do that again if he can get a victory here in game three. The Orioles on Masson, and welcome back to the Oakland Coliseum for game three of this four game set. Now knotted at one apiece, the Orioles and the A's ready to go at it on a beautiful night. Hi, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne, and uh, welcome for the Orioles. Obviously, this road trip now halfway through. They are two and three. That's not where they want to be on the negative side of it when they get back home. So they're trying to even it up here with a victory tonight. This uh, series puts together a couple of guys who know each other well the two managers, Bob Melvin, Buck Showalter, because because they played against one another in the minors then Buck ended up managing in New York and in 1994 Bob Melvin was playing for him and uh, Buck and he have talked about those days over the years in fact he put uh, Bob Melvin in a couple of tough spots once uh, he had him going in a ball game it was against Andy Rhodes and in a ball game in which he had not been able to hit against him everybody went what are you doing he ended up hitting a home run and then he'd do it again for Buck made him look good when he put him in against Randy Johnson. Here's the story. He got me out of a lot of trouble in New York with uh, Randy Johnson one time. I DH'd him. They were giving me so much grief about DH'ing him. You know, we were you're trying to find nine right hand hitters when Randy pitches. Because the left hand hitters, you want to make a left hand hitter mad at you, start him against Randy Johnson. Bob, I noticed, was like two for three with a double off of him, and I said, that's good enough for me. Bob, you're DHing. <laughs> I remember the media going, you're DHing Bob Melvin. It's a big thing. That's what the Yankees have stooped to, that Bob Melvin's DHing. He had a ball in a bullpen that night for a home run. I, I, if I could have taken him up the runway, I'd have given him a big hug and a kiss. At 35 or 36 or however old I was, that was a, I really became a fan of Bob Melvin that day. <laughs> Baseball can be a very small world, Jim, as uh, people come in contact with one another. Well, there's a couple, I guess, of me, you know, maybe PSs of that story. So I, I see Bob Melvin down in the cage because uh, Buck said this yesterday, and I said, so you really wore out Randy Johnson? He says, well, as a matter of fact, when I'm managing Arizona and he gets traded back from the Yankees, uh, to Arizona when he walked in I introduced myself I said you probably know me because you kept me in the big leagues for 10 years and if you knew Randy uh, Johnson I mean uh, you know with the hair and the mustache and all that thrown about 103 miles per hour when you were facing him you never really got him to smile he said I almost thought I saw it he has a little bit of a smile so uh, again you know I think uh, Bob Melvin and the other thing I did not know till I talked to this Gary is that he was drafted in the next round by the Orioles 1979 actually worked out when I played for the Orioles in 1979 he was living down in Menlo Park ended up going to uh, the University of California and then signing with the Tigers so he was almost an Oriole too and did end up playing for the Orioles along the way for a couple of years Bob Melvin Buck Showalter two managers who tonight have only one thing in mind for each of them looking for a W here in Oakland we'll be back a look at the starting lineups Dylan Bundy on the mound for the O's.
Yes, the low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Here in Oakland, a beautiful evening. And take a look at the temperature to start the ball game. BGE Home, Baltimore's home team for heating, cooling, plumbing, and electrical. Why would you call anyone else? Still a lot of sunshine, 64 degrees, a little cooler tonight than it's been in the last couple. Take a look at the Orioles starting lineup brought to you by Southwest. Yes, the low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Beckham, Machado, and Scope, Jones, Mancini, and Trumbo, Davis, Castillo, and Rickert. Wellington, Castillo now with a 10 game hit streak and some very impressive numbers during the streak. And uh, Sean Manaya came over from uh, Kansas City, former number one draft choice, got over three and a half million dollars to sign. He comes with the Ben Zobras trade back in 2015. Uh, so again a lot of fastballs change up that's the highest amount of change ups uh, 25 percent he's coming off a couple of tough starts only three and three and a third innings his last two starts and uh, in those uh, two starts uh, given up what uh, well 12 runs seven of them earned so again uh, a youngster you know, 25 years of old at least inexperienced uh, wise and uh, again three pitch pitcher out of Indiana State University is Manaya. He is ready to go. He's been on a little bit of a rocky roll that the Orioles will try and continue here in the ball game tonight. Beckham will lead it off. No rocky road there. 11 game hit streak coming in since joining the Orioles. He's hit in every ball game. He will take the first pitch for strike, and we are underway. Beckham now with eight multi hit games since joining the Orioles, upping the overall average to 288. He, of course, has played more games against Oakland than any other Orioles since he had played against Oakland when he was with the Rays this year. That should be taken up and in. So he's 11 for 31 on the season 11 for 31 with a homer and three RBIs against Oakland here in this series. He's gone four for nine. Pretty much straight up defense cheating a little bit at third Chapman moving in. Yeah, and that's because he sprays the ball everywhere and with power. You know, hit a triple first uh, pitch he saw in this series uh, over the head of Raji Davis, who is not in the lineup tonight. Dead center field. Left handers delivery on the way to Beckham, and that'll be there for a strike as well. Yeah, but I, uh, I, you know, you read a lot of the original scouting reports. They said he throws uh, 92 to 95. He may touch 92, but usually, and especially maybe it's the innings or whatever, he's right around 90. But again, he's 6'5", and he kind of sidearms the ball a little bit, so you don't pick it up a whole lot. And that one is going to miss away. He's had uh, 112 strikeouts, 41 walks, decent ratio. Kind of looks, even though he's young, like he's settled in. His numbers are very much like they were last year in every way. Innings pitched, he was 7-9 last year. Hits per inning about the same. That pitch is going to come way inside on Beckham at 92. And a full count to start the ball game. Now I was talking to uh, Mark Mulder, who was a very good left-hand pitcher in his own right, does television for him, and he said he's not a control guy. In other words, he may the target may be low and away. He may throw it up and in. Target may be up and in and might go away, but he can get you out because he's deceptive. And Beckham will fight that one off to hold the count full. Beckham is a uh, 276 on the lefties, about 20 points higher against right-handers actually. One of the improvements the Orioles have made this season is against left handed starters. They knew they were going to see a lot of them. They are 19 and 17 against left handed starters this year and that's the third best win percentage in the American League. Three two delivery for a second time Beckham is on the lead off walk. Yeah take a look at the defense and of course uh, pitching coaches will tell you there is no such thing as defense for a lead off walk. So the Orioles get what they want. And again, a huge ballpark. Uh, you got uh, you, you got Davis in left, Chris Davis, and then you got Boog Powell, the other Boog Powell in center. Chad Pinder, Chapman, uh, Simeon, uh, Lowry, and Olson. Uh, Lowry with some big hits last night. Olson with a home run, and then Maxwell B. And, uh, and there is Pinder. So he's been all over the place. You can see 47 games came up as an infielder because of the roster. Needs playing the outfield and playing it well. Good rookie numbers. He's right up there in the top 10 and rookies. Pinder is. Manny Machado drills one. That is way back in left center field near the wall. Up and it'll come off the top. Making the break is Beckham. He's heading to third. They're going to wave him home. Relay is not hit. And Beckham will score without a play at the plate. Manny Machado 
picks up the RBI double and almost got it out of the ballpark 388 away and the O's get the lead. Yeah we talked about how uh, I mean even uh, with the ball a little bit more lively if you hit it to that part of the ballpark you got a high wall now a little bit left it's probably a home run. All right here and you can see again the aborted efforts up over uh, the head of Powell and, you know Beckham uh, he was actually holding up and he they added the double uh, relay Gary and both of them were unable to catch it or it might have been bang bang at the plate. Manny Machado the RBI is 27th double of uh, the year and uh, the Orioles 67 RBIs for Manny. Runner at second base and the pitch taken by Scope. Well, what's interesting is you've got Chris Davis playing in left field. He has what has been often called the yips. He cannot throw the ball straight from the outfield to the infield. It's a known problem. We talked about it the other night. There's a story in the Players Tribune where he has talked himself about the fact that somehow he's got a mental problem with getting the ball thrown from the outfield back in and that was his throw and he missed both cutoff men. Bob Melvin said he thinks there's only been one time this year where that's been a problem. That is probably the second time where it's been a problem because he wasn't even close and that's the tough part about playing Chris Davis in the outfield. Yeah he calls it the creature and, uh, and that's actually he, he went and worked with Tom House who's helped a lot of pitchers former left handed pitcher himself. Jonathan Scope and he's going to get a base hit into right field. Up with it is Pender. He'll hit the cutoff man and the Orioles away against Manaya with a walk, a double, and now a single. The Orioles cover the corners with nobody out. Well, we saw Scope go 0 for 4 the first night. A couple hits last night. So a little breaking ball. He goes the other way. It's going to get the runner over, but it won't get him in because you've got to make the ball clear the infield. Uh, so Manny Machado did not want to get doubled up. He waited for the ball to get by Lowry, and now all of a sudden you got to walk double single. And the Orioles found out last night, Gary, uh, that uh, you know again you never know how many runs you're going to need as they uh, end up blowing a four to three lead, losing five to four. So hit hard early on, Manaya. Here's Adam Jones in the cleanup spot, three for eight, couple of home runs in this series. Goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Adams been blasting away in the last two games, yeah. one each. Yeah, hanging curveball off of Chris Smith, and then last night, Paul Blackburn, one and two pitch, fastball up and away, and Orioles would get a early one nothing lead both games. Adam, 308, seven home runs in the last 24 games played. And he rips one down the line. That's going to be a base hit. Manny Machado will score. Scope on his way to third. Davis will get the relay throw. They're going to send him home. It comes to the plate, the tag there, and he's out. Davis connected as he did hit the relay man, and that's what Bobby Dickerson was banking on that he wouldn't. And the out at the plate, close call, and the Orioles will take a look at it on the video. Yeah, again, I mean, you get to it quickly, and then really, I mean, he just throws it right to the cutoff man, and check out this throw. Right on the money, and again, bang, bang, and it gives him the avenue, and I don't know, did he get the corner of the plate before he was tagged out? I'm sure Buck Showalter's looking at it. Orioles video people taking a look here as the umpires uh, waited on it. And there's not going to be any challenge. So the out recorded at the plate, that is a 7-6-2 play at the plate. Adam Jones will be credited with a double and uh, an RBI, and the Orioles have a 2-0 lead in the ballgame. Big out, though, recorded at the plate. Well, Here's Mancini, and he'll take it first strike. Well, it's a huge out because the guy coming to the plate is 375. Now, I understand why Bobby Dickerson did. But uh, to the A's credit, not only the, the first relay, relay play, but the throw from Marcus Simeon, who's coming off a wrist injury, was perfect. Here's the delivery with the runner at second base. The left hander comes inside to him. So the Orioles exploding here as they jump on Manaya's first pitches. And Manny Machado with an RBI, Adam Jones with an RBI. And uh, the Orioles get an early lead, 59 driven in on the year now for Adam. Trey Mancini a look back by the lefty and he comes inside ball will get away and the runner will advance. That's the fifth wild pitch by Manaya this year. 
Yeah, you know what he's trying to do, Gary. I mean, that's I mean, that's a huge out because it, when you're getting hit this hard, uh, getting thrown out at the plate gives him uh, maybe a chance to get out of the inning. And then when you do that, then you bounce a breaking ball, trying to stay it underneath the strike zone with two strikes, bounces it, and Maxwell can't block it. Last four games, he has not had a win. One loss, three no decisions, coming off that three and a third inning outing against the Angels. Which he gave up six runs, six hits, and three and a third. And the infield coming in, Gary. Early on, trying to cut that run down if they can. They won't. That's a base hit into right field. Mancini will get one in. He'll make a turn. He is going to go to second now, decides better of it, and heads back to first base. So Trey Mancini with a single and an RBI, and Saturday's looking like a really good night. To the Orioles as they are up three nothing here in the first inning. Well, it's fireworks night, and it's happening early for the Orioles. I mean, what approach? It's a it's a pretty good pitch, except the result's not good because of the approach by the hitter. So Trey Mancini, and he's you know, hey, smart base running. Yeah. Scott Emerson, the pitching coach, is going to come out and talk to Sean Manaya, who's really getting lit up. What uh, a series this has been. Mancini came in. Having struggled a bit in Anaheim, but Trey is now five for nine, two home runs and three oh, RBIs in this two-plus game Number set against five. Oakland. What are three extra base hits on uh, the first night of the series on uh, Thursday? And what do you say? I was 0 for Anaheim mm. when we interviewed him after the game. Those will happen. Question is, can you rebound? The answer is yes. Pitch will be taken inside. Here is Mark Trumbo. Mark has had a couple of hits, seven at bats in the series, including a home run. The Orioles on top. They've got three runs on four hits. We're in the first inning. And the Orioles pounding away. And Cini off first base, pitch away. The Orioles are already three for three with runners in scoring position. In the first two games, that's as many hits as they had in 15 chances. They were three for 15. In the first two ball games, they're three for three already in this one. Pitch on the way. That's not going to catch the inside corner. Trumbo taking it, and it's three and zero. Oh. Yeah, now do you let him swing away three and zero. Oh. And you got Chris Davis, who's a very very cold on deck. 0 for 13, 4 for 38. So, you know, I would imagine he has the green light here. Delivery to him has taken a strike on the outside corner. We well, talked about the struggles for this left-hander. He's gone one and three last six games. ERA is 5.5 over the last six. And he had a great start to the season, but it's come unglued. Foul back and a big cut. Yeah, kind of a roller coaster ride. I mean, one and three early on, then he goes seven and two, wins five in a row, had some shoulder problems early on, and then as you mentioned, you know, the batting average, the ERA. Everything runners in scoring position numbers that have been pretty good all year are going up dramatically. Mancini at first base, pitch on the way, and that one will be foul back as well. Already Brady up in the bullpen. He just was called up last night, so Brady, new arrival, warming up, got some length. As he has had some starts. So Trumbo trying to keep it going here. There's only one down. That play came at the plate. Delivery to him and Trumbo another one foul back and he's just missed the yeah, last yeah. two. Yeah, nice swing right there. And you know when you're struggling a little bit, uh, you know, what happens is you just expand the strike zone. And when you're pitching and struggling, too many balls in the middle of the plate, and and then you that gets exacerbated by great approaches by the Orioles. Full count delivery on the way, and that ball is towards the gap in left center field. Hit very hard. Powell going back, no chance off the wall. Coming to third base will be Trey Mancini. He'll be held into second base with a double as Trumbo, and you got to believe that's yeah. got to be it for the left hand. Well, I mean, uh, you can see the strength of Mark Trumbo. He just goes out and hits a, a line drive, hits it so hard, and Powell plays it well off the wall. And the last thing Bobby Dickerson wants to do with only one out is get two guys thrown out of the first inning. So Bobby the Orioles continue. They have had uh, three you. doubles, two singles, and a walk. Here in the inning, and the only out recorded at the plate on Jonathan Scope. Yeah, the uh, changeup that he throws 25% of the time, he just hasn't been able to get in the position where he can use it. So again, no established yeah. anything. So an opportunity with the infield in again. 
you know, even though the shifts on but it's still in a chance for Chris Davis maybe to. Get a little bit of a more healthy RBI total. Two on here. Chris will take the pitch for a strike. Chris O for his last 13 at the plate. You know, the 27 pitches thrown already. Yeah, and uh, you can see the average 301, so he throws a lot of them. And we're going to see Hellickson tomorrow. Manaya down the list. And again, certainly much younger than all those other guys. Davis to the hole. That's going to be a base hit. That'll score Mancini. Trumbo will be held. Pender's throw to the cutoff man gets away, but it is backed up by the pitcher. It's uh, this is almost hard to watch yeah. and won't have to watch anymore. He's going to come out of there. The Orioles extend their lead to four nothing. Mancini crosses the plate. Davis gets out of the old for 13, picking up the base hit. And for Chris, that'll be RBI number 42. Sean Manaya, the starter. One third One third of an inning. Four nothing Orioles. Number 64, Michael. What, what just happened as he gets only a third of an inning already four runs charged to him six hits. Yeah they'll get somebody thrown out of the plate he doesn't get anybody out so uh, Michael Brady. You know, he uh, came over as a minor league uh, uh, acquisition he could start he started at the minor league very low ERA not a winning record but that happens very often. So he's been up down this is the third time he's been back to the big leagues he started down in Nashville and also pitched out of the bullpen. And again uh, you know he's used to being a long man a. Uh, did pitch on Tuesday five innings and they still called him up. But again earlier in the year he actually pitched uh, six innings against the Giants. Dylan Bundy is over there watching all this loving the runs but trying to stay uh, loose and well, warm and well, ready to pitch. That's why you don't leave the bullpen when you have an inning like that. It doesn't have to happen very often but the last thing I mean if I'm Dylan Bundy I'm running right down here and taking a few more warm ups because you only get nine. Who wants to sit I mean you want to sit around and have your offense do this. But you be you want to be able to uh, get out there and defend the runs your team gets you. Runners on first and third, Trumbo and Davis. Castillo up with a 10 game hit streak. Pitch will be fouled back. Bundy, 30 years old, he's uh, out of California. Laguna Niguel, not far away from here, drafted out of the University of California. Rejoined uh, the team a day ago for the third time. He has had eight relief appearances over the first two times with the ball club with a 4-1-5 ERA. For the Sounders, their triple A team, 17 games, eight starts in triple A. Castillo will take the pitch outside for a ball. So trying to shut him down while the Orioles will try and keep it going. Yeah, you stay out of the double play here with only one out, and you know, fly ball scores a run of any depth. Maybe you can keep it going and you know, again. They never have enough runs. Especially early in a ball yeah. game. Working from the third base side of the rubber, the delivery is hit towards third. Cut off shortstop one. That's all they'll get in the run will score. You know, it's kind of interesting uh, because Castillo doesn't run very, very uh, well. It's almost like Lowry might have had a play at first, but 
because the balls hit to the left side Chapman couldn't get it. And uh, Simeon had to go to his right. So again they don't even think to try to. But again he just doesn't run and right now and he's just already given up the, the chances of doing it. And it's not that he's not running hard he doesn't have a lot of speed. Castillo gets his 37th RBI on the fielder's choice and the Orioles have a five at nothing lead. And Joey Rickard the number nine hitter batting here in the first inning Rickard's going to get a base hit into left field. He's on with a single Castillo will stop at second base and the merry go round continues. Yeah and then Brady does it. he's not a guy that's he's not a flamethrower he's 30 years old so you know you look at his his numbers I mean he's got to cut fastballs fastballs around 90 maybe touches 91 change up curveball because he's he's kind of been a starter through the minor leagues but he doesn't he's not there's no wow factor not going to light up a radar gun Orioles back to where it started Tim Beckham led this ball game off with a walk came around to score. Manny Machado Adam Jones Mancini with two Castillo with one are the RBI producers here in the first inning and there are runners at first and second pitch will be taken outside for a ball. Boy, what a start for the Orioles here in this first inning this these starters for Oakland have given up six or more runs in a ball game seven out of the last ten and they are about to Enter that mark again, maybe in the very first inning of this game. Yeah, and they uh, they uh, have a pitcher that pitched five innings on Tuesday. They brought him up, even though he had started earlier in the week. Inside oh. corner for a strike. Well, the book gets closed on the starter. Sean Manaya will be charged with the five on six hits in a third of an inning. And uh, what a tough start for the 23-year-old. Defense back. He'll look for the double play here if they can get a ground ball. Uh, with two down, sorry. Look for the force out if they can get a ground ball at second. Pitch on the way, and that one will be fouled off. Yeah, so you can see Michael Beckham Brady. Yeah. yeah, Michael Brady's about movement. The ball runs in on his Tim Beckham's fist. Yeah, when you get as hot as uh, he's been, and uh, we were talking about it before the game. I, you know, I saw the late Don Baylor who passed away earlier in the uh, in the week. Uh, he went 15 for 20, and you know, Reggie hit seven home runs in a game when he played for the Orioles. He usually kind of gets yourself uh, out. So here's your Statcast runners, uh, powered by AWS. But he's done a nice job being pretty selective. Castillo and record the base runners slider will be taken outside for a ball. Of course for Beckham now he's moved into the tie third all time for the Orioles. Players with the longest hitting streak to begin their Orioles career. David Newhan the record is 15 set in 2004. And he's only uh, three shy of that one. And already has come to the plate twice in the first inning of this ball game. Pitch on the way and he reaches. Wow, did he almost pick off his teammate? Manny Machado was in that on deck circle and that ball went right over his head. Well, that's right. Remember when Beltry, uh, you know, we were talking about it because they're giving away the uh, the batting circle. He moves behind the hitter, so that won't happen. Uh, a lot of times when you're over on that on deck circle and a slider that's hit off the end of the bat, you're right in the range. So Manny kind of moves a little bit. It's a little bit harder to hit somebody where he's standing now. Tough angle. Ground ball fouled off again. So Beckham, as he did in his first at bat, here's that pitch before. And watch how he has to just drive this right straight back, lower right. Yikes. And he didn't see that coming until it was already there. Yeah, well, he was trying to, you know, a lot of guys, uh, you don't want them standing right behind home plate timing your pitching. That can get a little bit of an annoyance. But you can see hitters actually trying to time. You know the release point and what your stride's going to be, and that's what it looked like Manny was doing. Pitch on the way, and that ball put up in the air down the line. A lot of foul territory. Olson over, and will not have a play. It's interesting here that the on deck circles for both sides. I was looking to see if the Orioles might have moved it, but they put the on deck circles way towards the middle. They're not over by the dugouts. You see the A's on the far side over there, and the Orioles. So that's done intentionally. To try and protect the on deck hitters. Um, as they say in this game, a 
ball will find you no matter where you are. That's a tough angle to even get it back there. Much easier if that on deck circles over by the dugout. That's going to be a base hit. That's going to bring in at least one run. Castillo will score. Rickert's being waved home. Davis into the cutoff and hits him, but there's no play at the plate. Unbelievable start. Beckham delivers a double and two RBIs, and the Orioles have a seven to nothing lead. And now he's hit in all 12 games as an Oriole. Yeah, again, I mean, I, he kind of gets jammed, but again, if you're hitting as hot as he is, you know where the bat head is. So he gets it quickly to the ball, nobody playing down the line, and then Chris Davis does make a good throw. Hits the cutoff man, but the speed of Rickard. Okay, right there, there's your cutoff man, Marcus Simeon. So again, I mean, uh, <laughs> so knew him, knew a new hand, David. Uh, and was here, Javi Lopez, uh, Beckham now, of course, 12 games. Eric Burns, hair on fire. He's actually, Orioles got him from Oakland. Manny Machado, an RBI double his first time up, and he scored. So Beckham continues his amazing streak, and the Orioles continue their amazing first inning. Pitch on the way, and that'll be taken for a strike. Brady not having any more luck coming out of the bullpen than Manaya had as a starter. Well, he did pitch on Tuesday, and he does not appear to, to, to be a stuff guy. Michael Brady, the look in, pitch on the way, and that will be yeah. fouled back and out of play. This is one of those games where the Orioles can't wait to get to the plate. You don't get a lot of these. No, no and you can see right there, that's a little cut fastball at 87, home run swing. This game can become very difficult. This is one of those innings. Pitch on the way to him, Manny reaching for it will follow it off the other way. And also, if you're an outfielder and even on the right side of the infield, uh, the sun, because this is a, a, an hour earlier, right in your eyes. I can't imagine that you're seeing the ball off the bat playing center field or, or uh, right field at this time of day. Two down, still runner off second base and foul back. Man, he was going for downtown Oakland on that swing. A big cut. Well, I can't believe that Bundy hadn't gone down and warmed up because uh, we started the game, what? Maybe almost half, hour, half an hour ago. He's been sitting there watching, enjoying the runs, but cooling down. Pitch on the way to him, and he reaches and strikes him out in a Bronx cheer on the other coast. The Orioles an enormous inning. Manny Machado after the walk to Beckham. RBI double. Adam Jones would pick up an RBI double. Beckham a 12 game hit streak. Two RBIs and a two bagger. One inning already traveled 2,851 miles to see the Orioles. I saw him before the ball game tonight. I say, you hold that sign up now and you direct it towards our booth. And we'll get a shot of that for yeah. you. So there you are. <laughs> and we'll make it try to try to get the game out of reach of the first. Yeah. It'll be Powell, Pinder, and Lowry, Davis, Healy, and Osen, Chapman, uh, Maxwell, and Simeon for Chad Pinder, the rookie. Last five games outstanding with that 381 average. 
So uh, Dylan Bundy will uh, try to make it four in a row. Won his last three decisions. Boog yeah. Powell leads it off. We've had the other Chris Davis here in Oakland. Now we got the other Boog Powell. Dylan coming in with the 11 and 8 mark. And Boog will take the pitch away. And I'll take a look, and there you go. I mean, the numbers have come down after going up after a great start. Uh, again, the slider has been the pitch of. Uh, but it's unconscionable that they, they, somebody didn't say you need to get your rear end down on the uh, bullpen and throw some pitches. It just it's unfathomable as far as I'm. Yeah, and it's an easy bullpen. Yeah, you just run down, you get out there, you, you throw, because you, 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 this is the big leagues. Delivery on the way, and then he's on with a walk. So his first at bat is an A, and Boo Powell gets a free pass. Well, he's not the first time Boo Powell's been walked pitching around, <laughs> but uh, take a look at the defense and. This is we said about Manaya, no defense for walk, especially when you get seven nothing lead. Rickard Jones and Trumbo, uh, Mark playing right field, Machado, Beckham, Scope, and Davis, and then Wellington Castillo catching. So there is Mark Trumbo. Trumbo DHing right and first base this year. Right field for this one and a tough right field because there's a lot of room out there. Here is Pender. He's gone three for seven, and has picked up one home run in this series. Pender getting his first chance against the Orioles, as are many of these A's who are young players that the ball club and organization are taking a look at for the coming years. Good pitch down and away to him that he can't catch up to. Yeah, and that slider imperative to have a good one tonight against these uh, these young hitters. You know, they can hit the fastball. I don't know of too many guys that come to the big leagues, uh, you know, high draft choice. Pender, one of those guys, and you can see much better on the road. They can't hit the fastball. He could do it. He's on the 10 day DL, came off July 31. Since then, he's hitting 400, four multiple hit games during that time period. Bundy works him in and out. That one is foul tipped into the mitt. He will walk away distressed. Yeah, take a look at our Mercedes pitch catch. It's not a great slider because it stays in the middle of the plate, but it fools him. And if you watch last night's okay. game, uh, what, nine of the first 11 A's struck out against Obaldo. 11 on the night because he could make these kind of pitches. Uh, he stayed away. They never had any idea of what's coming. Uh, he did get in trouble. Uh, gave up three runs and then would leave the game and Brock would give up a couple. Lowry coming up. Lowry's had a good series. He's gone 4 4 8. Dustin Pedroia went on the DL again with the Red Sox, continuing to have problems over the last month. And this name is being bandied about. Would the Red Sox be interested? In the veteran Jed Lowry, they believe they will get Pedroia back, but, and that's a big but, would you look for somebody to back it up? If you do, Lowry might be one of those guys the Red Sox would want to talk to Oakland about. Well, of course, it's a new regime there with Dave Dombrowski uh, as the president of baseball operations, but he started his career with the Red Sox. Had you know, actually, he was a very good young player, switch hitting infielder, could play shortstop, but had wrist problems. And since then has been around and used to, I mean, played with a number of teams, but a veteran at 33. Yep. Lowry with a runner on at first base. Pitch to him down to first. Scoop one. Got to make a tag at second off the mark and won't get the double play. Lowry on the ground ball out. And Powell ends up down at second base. Yeah, we saw uh, Raji Davis uh, on the similar play right there actually on. But Thursday night, and we'll take a look. Uh, he he actually veered to the left. Now this will not happen with Powell, but the throw off the line because you don't have much of an avenue, nor time. So nice play by Chris Davis. Short hop, tags the base. There's the second out, and then Powell with good speed, uh, able to uh, get into scoring position. Yeah, they're going to try to work their way back into the uh, into the game, and the leadoff walk gives them an opportunity here in the first. Davis one for six. In the series, he'll go after it, drives at center field. Adam Jones looking up at the wall, and goodbye home run. Chris Davis with a K delivers a long ball and gets some two on the board here in the first inning. Came in fourth in home runs in the American League. Now, first time Dylan Bundy has uh, pitched in this ballpark, second time against the A's. And 
He just got hurt, but as you mentioned, the other Chris Davis, who now has hit 32 home runs. And then again, I mean, tremendous power sent straight away. I mean, really anywhere. He just gets it in the air, very much like uh, Matt Olson, the first baseman, did last night off of Baldo Jimenez to get him back in the game. 32 home runs on the year, and it is a 7 to 2 ball game, and that is just what Oakland needed a little response to the seven run first inning that the Orioles had. Here is Healy. He'll take the pitch up high for a ball. Aaron Judge starting the day with 35 homers on top. Mustakas. Mike Mustakas one behind Judge for the American League League with 34. Joey Gallo with 32. And now Davis has tied him for third. And the pitch is taken for a strike. He leads the DH in the ball game 0 for 4 in this series. Dylan Bundy has surrendered 23 home runs on the uh, year and uh, yeah, 13 to right handed hitters. Yeah, that's a Start. lot of home runs. Yes. Well, he's a fly ball pitcher. And that, you know, if you make your pitches, that should work here. A lot of foul territory more than any. Healy, who also has home run power, but has been struggling. Hitting only uh, 195 over the last 42 games. He does have four home runs during that stretch. 1 2 delivery on the way by Bundy and got him to chase one away for the strikeout. So that'll do it here in the inning, but a couple of runs, one hit. Chris Davis delivers his 32nd homer, makes it a 7 2 game. In our Major League Notebook, he talked about it in an article he wrote for the Players Tribune. The creature. It's what I call the doubts inside yourself that bubble up right to the surface of your consciousness when you're performing a certain action. Some people call it the yips or describe it as having a mental block, but to me, it's the creature. There I was, looking rookie league, getting my first taste of professional ball. Suddenly everything was different. When a ball came my way, all I'd think about was making a bad throw. That creature, unfortunately, still here in the Bay Area. Doesn't show himself as often as it did back in the day, but always there. You know what? I also see myself making a huge throw, one of the big playoff games, right on the money to nail a runner to preserve a win for the A's. I can visualize that in my mind, and I know I have it in me. Great article. And then we saw what he's talking about the creature. Here's the play on the ball that goes to him in left field. He's got two cutoff men. The ball hits off the wall. He's backing up from left field and watch him try to make the throw. Not even close. And that's been the problem for him ever since he came into professional baseball. Yeah, he said, I mean, in that article, and, uh, you know, he was certainly talking about it yesterday because it had come out a couple of days ago. He said, yeah, I, my big, my my biggest focus just hit the cutoff man. Now he was doing a little 180, so maybe that threw the. But one of those guys you would have thought, as long as that throw is, would have been able to corral it, but that wasn't the case. Great for him to be able to go out and say that. Get it out. Jonathan Scope at the plate, base hit, first time up, got thrown out at the plate. This time he will be a strikeout victim of Brady. 
Well, I guess the only good news if you're the A's is uh, if you give up seven runs in the first, you got all those innings to get back, and then you hope that maybe Brady, who, you know, again, I mean, he's not overpowering, but if you're going to swing at balls out of the strike zone at 90, you'll be able to get you out. And his job is very simple give them a chance to get back into the game, and how do you do that? Pitch well. Here is Adam Jones picking up an RBI. Adam now has 801 career RBIs. The home run he got in the ball game last night is 22nd. His number 800 in his career, and he added to it with the double in the first inning of this ball game. As Adam continues to produce wherever he is in the lineup, moved down here in this road trip into the cleanup spot, and he's had a big series, four for nine, two home runs, and five RBIs now in this set against the A's. Brady's delivery on the way to him and that'll be a fastball at 90. Yeah take a look the Orioles uh, what do they do they hit home run so well, there you go back in 96 24 games 2017 15 consecutive road games with one and they, you know, back to back on two occasions on Thursday Jones puts it up in the air to right field Pender having trouble finding it does and puts it away yeah the sun still affected him and you know, the glass is up on top of his head, but he went straight back. Kind of did a drop step, but the ball hit high enough. So Brady pitching out of the zone. A couple of outs here in the second. Now Orioles eight, seven runs, 16, eight hits in the first Brady, inning. They sent 11 to the plate. Now Brady is trying to retire the side in order here in the second inning. Trey Mancini, RBI. He picked up a base hit. He also would score in that first inning. Trey has picked up his uh, 20th home run of the season. He's going to try and hit the all time home run mark for a rookie for the Orioles. With the number of games still left to play, he's got a shot at Kell's mark. Pitch taken inside. 28, I believe. Kell had 28. And uh, Brady's and uh, Trey has got 20. So very reachable the way Mancini's been hitting home runs four multiple homer games this year for him. That one in the air again to right field and again Bender trying to find it does and puts it away. Well there you go that's a game of baseball seven runs in the first inning and retired in order in the second. is Kevin Regert from Owens Mills 500 for being selected 500 more for every Orioles home run hit tonight play home run Rich's scratch outs went up to 50,000 or enter non winning tickets for a chance to be the contestant of the game go to mdlottery.com slash home run Kevin yeah Kevin's hoping Good the luck. doubles count but no no money for doubles no Dylan Bundy and the pitch will be taken inside here is Olson. One hit in the series, one for seven, a home run, worth a couple of RBIs. Matt Olson 
Chapman waiting on deck. And he'll rip one. Oh, my. Way back and goodbye home run. Rebounding off the cement alleyway onto the field. And he cracked that one. And it's a 7-3 to three game. Well, he was. Uh, I mean, that, that ball hit at 111 miles per hour. But 23 of them down at AAA. Big swing hit one last night here, his fifth. He was in, in AAA hitting a home run every 12.78 times to the bat so big guy looking for the ball out over the plate you can see the target in and again I mean off the bat and they wonder if this swing is too long it wasn't here and you could see inside part of the plate and so again fly ball pitcher and so that's two off yeah. Dylan Bundy in the ball game and they have been tagged Olsen gets his sixth makes it a seven to three game so the A's responding as they would need to after that big first inning get themselves back in it again and Bundy away outside. Well, this is a great place to throw fly balls, but they cannot be high, you know, well hit balls. And you know, you can pitch down to the zone. You know, it's harder to get leverage. This guy's got tremendous power too. Olson now has six home runs and this just his 23rd game with the A's. So he's kind of doing the same thing he did in the minors with the Home runs per at bat. Well, Bob Melvin, uh, who manages the A's, was saying, and he can really pick it. He's a and he can play right field, so he can play a lot of uh, positions for the A's. And of course, if he hits, and that's another reason. I mean, Yonder Alonso hit two, what, 275. He had 22 home runs, and he's gone because of Olson. Chapman will take the pitch. That's going to be in there for a strike. Chapman cannot believe it. He has struck out seven consecutive. Times. Well, Gary, he takes this curveball right down the middle. He can believe the pitch. He can't yeah. believe he took it. Yeah, take a look. I mean, just outside middle. And, you know, getting young hitter. Trying to stay here in the big leagues. Probably will because they're not playing that well at 51 and 65. But uh, it looks like he has trouble with a breaking ball. Here is the catcher, Maxwell, up. One for three. Games he's played in in the series. He'll take the pitch. That'll be a strike at the knees. He too has struggled at the plate since the All Star game, hitting only 125. He's played in uh, 22 games now since the break. Breaking ball on the inside corner for a strike to him. And another guy that has a very good power. You don't always see it. I mean, you watch him, he can hit him as far as anybody. In batting practice. Looks like he's a little bit in between some of his swings. That'll be up and into it. This team it continues to strike out at an alarming rate. They struck out 12 times last night, 58 times. They have fanned at least 10 times in a game. 10,084 strikeouts coming in, second most in the majors to Tampa Bay. And yeah, that's in 116 games, so that's. And they won. Five to four last night. Well, they won because their bullpen shut down the Orioles after the first five innings, and that's what uh, uh, Michael Brady is going to try to do tonight. Maxwell waiting on a two ball, two strike count. And a uh, cut on a pitch he had no chance at. Well, there's, I mean, there's a plus breaking ball. Looked like a slider, a little bit harder than the hook. And again, starts on the plate. He thinks it is, and he waves at it. And again, terrific pitch. You know, you read fastball and then it isn't. Very easily uh, swung over. Dylan Bundy with four strikeouts. Marcus Simeon, three game hit streak. He is two for seven. He has had a hot bat. He's hitting over 300 the last 21 ball games, 307. And during the streak, he's gone 3 4 11. Pitch will be taken away on the slider. So the A's two run homer in the first Chris Davis solo shot leading off the second inning by Matt Olson. Now two down Simeon with the bases empty and the shift on against him in the infield. And he waves at one not close swinging strike. Dylan Bundy has a hundred and eleven strikeouts in hundred and thirty six innings on the year. And that one's way outside. Orioles had talked about watching his innings. Last year, 109 here with a big club. 
with a 10 and 6 record. They need him now on the mound in the regular part of this five man rotation. Yeah, coming in tonight with what starting with 134 and a third innings. Got a what an off day on Thursday, another one the following week. So, of course, Buck Showalter doesn't tell anybody of his intentions. No, and some I think part of that is he's not sure. Yeah. I mean, if the Orioles play themselves out of any hope, that's one thing, but for this mess in the wild card, it's likely they're going to be in it. The semi is on and uh, giving him an extra day's rest. Hey, well, look at the numbers, and it's yin and yang. Yep. You know, I mean, four days, that's the normal. I mean, six days, well, the number goes down. And then again, I, the two of those are recent. So, and again, he's in his regular rotation because of no off days and the fact that they, Chris Tillman has been sent to the bullpen. He hasn't, he hasn't seen action in, what, about 11 or 12 days now. Here's Boog Powell. And yes, he was named after the Orioles Boog Powell. Because his grandfather was a Boog Powell, Oriole Boog Powell fan. His dad and he grew up as Angels fans, not far from the uh, stadium in Anaheim for this Boog Powell. That up the middle, off the mound, that's going to be a base hit. Making the turn and staying as Adam Jones gets it in is Simeon. So the A's trying to mount a two out rally here, two on. Well, it's a young hitting ball club, and if they're going to get fastballs at the middle of the plate where this one is, this is what they're going to do. And again, that's a nice swing. You know, I, I met him for the first time, and I said, well, you know, I introduced myself. I said, I played with a real good pal. I said, not that you, I mean, you're the facsimile so far. And he goes, oh, I know who you are, and I also know who the other Boog pal was. And <laughs> Boog pal hit the first home run ever in this ballpark back in April 17th, 1968. And it was off Luke Krause, who was a bonus kid. It was the first hit yeah. in this ballpark. Yeah, the baseball oddities in that regard are clear. Also in that ball game, Brooks and Belanger had home runs in an Orioles 4-1 to one win. Dave McNally was the starting pitcher in that game. The Raiders were here in 1966, but the baseball team didn't get here for a couple of years later, so that's why the numbers are off in that regard. Two on, big at bat right here, put up in the air, right field over to the line. Mark Trumbo will get there, settles underneath it, and will put it away. So a run in on a couple of hits, Olsen the home run. Two are left on. He's getting back 7-3. Baseball when the Orioles host the Angels August 18 through 20 on Friday August 18 post game fireworks presented by Baltimore area credit unions all fans receive the 25th anniversary poster presented by me for tickets Orioles.com or 888-848-BIRD. So the Oriole fans watching the O's explode for the seven runs eight hits in the first inning driving the starter out Sean Manaya five runs six hits in a third of an inning. Now Michael Brady on 
retired the side in order in the second and will face Trumbo here who doubled and scored in the first inning. Yeah, and Michael Brady uh, assuming I probably why they got him as a, as a minor league free agent because he can pitch in these roles. After all the good clubs I played on I mean, when I first got to the Orioles they, you know, I was a long guy and then they had Davey Leonard who was very happy out of Johns Hopkins and, uh, to assume this role then Sammy Stewart in the 70s was outstanding. Trumbo waiting on the 2 0 delivery and that'll be uh, in the air left center not deep. Boog puts it away Powell there and Trumbo is retired. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in our ball game tonight brought to you by Miller Light. In case you were wondering for the Orioles those seven runs in the first inning ties their high for runs in any inning. They've had seven runs in an inning now four times. Against the Rangers, Cardinals, Tigers, and now against Oakland. Chris Davis, base hit, RBI his first time up. Chopper, foul. However, the last time the Orioles got seven or more runs in the first inning, you got to go back to May 20 of 2008 when they scored seven runs against the Yankees in the first. Did they win? Don't know. I'd like to know that. I'm, I'm afraid to look. Comfortable. Yeah. Well, I know because I've been out there. I just I always in one seven in the first. I, I kind of incrementally do them, add yeah. them up. Yeah, because otherwise you get, you know, you want to blow a seven nothing lead. They give you a seven, you, you know the game's not over because you got to get 27 outs and have the lead. We saw that last night, but uh, yeah, just do it slowly. Give me two, three. Can add another three in the sixth. A couple more in the seventh. Exactly. Shift on against him that will be bounced. The Orioles won that uh, ball game 12 to 2 against the uh, Yankees. It was, against, it was Cabrera against Messina in that game. Daniel Cabrera, Mike Messina. Wait, Mike Messina gave up seven runs. Future Hall of Famer. Gave up some of them. He gave up all seven. Really? Wow. Didn't happen often, if ever, other than that. Pitch on the way is in there for strike. That's three strikeouts for Brady. Boys, you know, again, it, it, this is the kind of guy, and no disrespect, you know, this is just a little backdoor slider, but it's flat, doesn't have a lot of tilt. Number 29, Wellington. Castillo. Offense, like you're seeing right here, is you can't turn it on and off, apparently. Yeah. Brady is another one of those pitchers who transitioned from an infielder. He came up professional baseball as a shortstop in 2010, went into the bullpen. And did work out of the pen originally, and then since has been both a starter and reliever. Pitch taken away by Castillo. Castillo an RBI and a fielder's choice in the first inning. Two down, nobody on here in the third. This is game three of the four game set of the day game coming up tomorrow. Delivery will be swung on, foul tipped into the mid. I mean, that's just a backup slider and, you know, big swing, but. What does Scott Coolbaugh say? Swing easy, hit it hard. Yep. It's the motto. Yeah. Or in other words, know where the bad head is. Barrel the ball. Delivery to Castillo, and he'll pop him up third base side. Chapman. And the Rainmaker comes down. He's retired the side in order in the uh, last two innings. A's back to the plate. Orioles lead 7-3.
Wisconsin brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by visitannapolis.org. Create your moment at visitannapolis.org. Take a look at downtown Oakland maligned much but a city that is rejuvenating especially in the downtown area folks moving back in to live in the condos a lot of new restaurants have opened downtown so there's a lot like Baltimore really I mean with the as far as the downtown area is concerned with the influx of younger people who want to live there and want the amenities to go with well, it. and probably can afford to live there compared to San Francisco oh, my lord you know, yeah you know where everybody wants to live and so live here and take yeah. the ferry across to work. Again, the Mart, the Bay Area Rant, yep. Rapid Transit System gets you where you need to go. Lowry grounded out his first time up, and a check swing went around. Home plate umpire Nick Lentz will make the call on that one. Yeah, Dylan Bundy, he's going to have to do, and he's certainly capable of doing it, what he did down in Anaheim, where, uh, you know, he used all his pitches, very much like uh, a Baldo that had no idea. Gave up a couple of runs in, in seven innings with only five innings. Struck out ten, didn't walk anybody. Lowry will go after it, pop it back. Or Bundy, we talked about the uh, trying to win four in a row, four decisions. He had a win against Texas, then an ND. Last two outings, win against KC, win against the Angels. Previously this year, back in April, he had uh, Four consecutive decisions he won against Toronto, Boston, Boston again in the White Sox. Yeah, he was really on a roll there. And that one in the gap, not deep. Adam Jones, Lowry retired. What a way. Celebrate the ballpark that forever changed baseball when the birds host the Angels 18 through 20 on Saturday August 19 the Orioles welcome back members of the 92 birds Oriole Park's first team select players are going to participate in a pregame home run derby and all fans are going to get the 25th anniversary Oriole Park replica ballpark for tickets Orioles.com that's all coming up August 19. Bundy's second appearance first start against Oakland in his career. He had pitched in relief against them two innings of relief back in May of 16. Well you talked about uh, you know embracing Oakland uh, the other part of that article Chris Davis uh, actually lived here stayed here in the offseason so you know, Ricky Henderson who we've seen on the field lives across the bay but they did a lot of things you know trying to promote the, you know, the A's because the A's you know, we talked about it they're still looking for a place to build a new stadium. They're going to stay though that's good news they're going to stay in Oakland Raiders of course will be gone in a couple of years. This ball club's going to stay here and that's important. Uh, Melvin their skipper. Pitch on the way and a foul ball right straight back by Davis who delivered this 32nd home run in the first inning. A couple of RBIs. Yeah, so they go with the 42 he hit last year. Got him from Milwaukee. You know, he's one of those players as you look at uh, you know Chris Davis uh, trailing now Jonathan Scope and Nelson Cruz will see him when the Orioles after tomorrow go up to Seattle. Pitch on the way in a check swing he just had the ball hit bad on that one. Yeah when you used to watch the highlights of the Brewers with Chris Davis uh, you, you know invariably every week or so you, you, you did a home run and you would say boy somebody because he's a very muscular guy he could hit him a long way. And they, he hits him in to the opposite field, kind of like Trey Mancini hits him for the Orioles. 18 of his home runs here in this ballpark. Fouled it back again. A 241 hitter in both places. How about that? Can't get any more even coming into this ball game. He spreads everything around the average and the home runs. Davis to be followed by Healy. We are in the bottom half of the third inning. Ball game that started with the Orioles getting seven runs on eight hits in the first inning. Foul yeah. back again. Yeah, another big swing. And yeah, it was interesting in the uh, the players' tribunal when he talked about. It, he said, you know, throwing is such difficult. He said, but when I'm hitting well, he said, I kind of envision the ball floating up there. And it reminded me of what George Brett said when he hit 390. He said the ball looks like a beach ball. Now I don't know if it looks that big, but. Davis will go yeah. after that one. That looked like a P. Yeah. And <laughs> exactly. that will be strikeout yeah. number five for Dylan Bundy. Yeah, again, there have been 15 guys that have struck out over 150 times. This is 151. Uh, talking about the A's. And right here, high fastball. You know, again, this time he's thrown some other pitches, so he sets it up well, and then this is out of the zone. Last time the home run 
that center was a little bit lower a little more touchable reachable two down nobody on Ryan Healy also a strikeout victim in his first at bat and Dylan Bundy going after a one two three inning which he has not had in the first three pitch on the way will be down low for a ball first two innings leadoff batter got on a walk and a home run Dylan has had a bit of a problem with that retiring only 64 percent of leadoff batters swing and a miss good pitch down and away yeah, and this is also uh, when you look at over the, the course of all his starts and this is the 23rd 20 runs in the third inning Manaya who never got out of the first his he get, had given up 16 runs in the second. Didn't give any up in this second inning. No. Didn't make it. That's going to be a base hit. Took that one the other way. So Healy, the DH, delivers a two out single here in the third inning to keep the uh, inning alive. So take a look. Uh, you know, got to start the last two months of last year, a 110 game. So really great start. Did not have a good spring. I mean, in April, May, and then all of a sudden people are going, well, is he getting tired? Is he pitching too much? And then for a young pitcher, he's made a nice transition where he's used all his pitches. He said he's felt fine throughout that. But the other thing, Gary, and I think this is important, you've got to be a good self evaluator. He, he knew he did not pitch well in those two months, and he's done something about it. Here is Matt Olson. Olson, home run. Second inning is sixth of the year. He's had two now in this series and three RBIs. In fact, the two hits he's had against the Orioles have been. Home runs. So Olsen with a runner on at first base this series, the first time he has faced the Orioles. Big shift put on with scope way out in right field. Pitch is at the knees on the outside corner. Yeah, they tried to come in. That was a changeup, probably the first one he's thrown tonight. They tried to come in with a fastball and it, it was gone. Olsen, another one of the youngsters, 23 years old. Made his major league debut with Oakland last year, two for 21. September call up. Came back inside and uh, turns in dismay at a called strike. Yeah, Nick Lentz uh, doing the home plate umpiring. And I would say so far, I mean, we're three umpires into this crew. It's the, uh, the strike zone has favored to me the pitcher more than the hitter. Pretty liberal. It's pretty even up yeah. historically. Um, if it's in there, it is. If it isn't, it isn't. Runner on first base, long look over by Bundy, and that one. See, and he has again. a good eye, and uh, you know, Bob Melvin saying, "Hey, that's a perfect example. They threw the ball right where the glove was, except the glove wasn't over the plate, and he didn't chase." Somehow, again, now you got home run power, trying to work your way back into this game. Pitch on the way, swing and a miss, and he'll go down the K route. That's six picked up by Bundy. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. Three complete, game three of the four set.
brought to you by the all-wheel drive RAV4. Toyota, what drives you? Visit buyatoyota.com for great deals. Gary Thorne and Jim Palmer here in Oakland looking across all the windsurfers out there in San Francisco on the other side of the bay. A beautiful day here today and a, it'll be cool but a nice evening. Seven to three, the Orioles on top. And then we're going to have a we got a nice crowd assembling uh, with firework nights. A lot of early fireworks, ten runs. Pitch will be taken by Joey Rickard. He had a base hit, run scored in the first inning. Beckham and then Machado. The Orioles are two and three on the trip. They have averaged four runs a game here in the West Coast. They've obviously upped that already in this game. The uh, starters have gone two and two. Good ERA, 3.21. Bullpen has had a loss and a save. And overall, their ERA out of the pens, 2.38. Pretty good numbers, but only two wins out of it so far. Yeah. Break it out in front of that one. Well, runs, runs usually, obviously not tonight in the first. They're hard to come by, or harder to come by because of the parks are bigger. Yeah, Dylan Bundy today, you know, he's the first time I ever pitched here. He said, I thought. Uh, Los Angeles was big, and it, it is at night compared to day games. Certainly compared to Camden Yards. Ma, that may have got him. I think it did. Hit batter. So the Orioles yeah. get the leadoff man on. We'll see what they can do with this one. On Sunday, August 20, the Oriole Advocates conduct the 17 cardboard to leather equipment collection presented by Lake Mason during the 135 game against the Angels. Fans are encouraged to bring new and gently used baseball equipment to the game. Benefits the underprivileged youth in developing countries. Information at OriolesReach.com. That's coming up on August 20. A lot going on for the Orioles when they head back home after this West Coast trip. Yeah, they know their record. Yeah, we'll do a little bit of running. Maxwell much uh, better than last year. Ten out of 32. Uh, always threw very well in the minor leagues. Coming up to Oakland behind the plate. Beckham has had a two RBI double. As Toronto walk, he scored. Has the 12-game hit streak. Big lead at first. Runner not going. Breaking ball is in there for a strike to Tim. Beckham here in the. Uh, this ballpark and against this team has done well. He's hitting 333 lifetime against Oakland, pitching in 280 here in this yard. He's had uh, one home run in the Oakland Coliseum. Good back. Yeah, I look him at, at Tim Beckham from seeing him all those years in Tampa. I mean, didn't play regularly till this year, but he would pinch hit and play on occasion as a line drive hitter, and that works well here. With the immenseness of this park. And of course, now pretty confident hitter. Big lead. Pitch on the way, and he drills that one to left field. He got all of it. Davis going back, looking up on this one. It'll take a bounce off the scoreboard. Joy record coming will be held up and a double. Another multi hit game and a double for Beckham. Yeah, Michael Brady cannot pitch in the strike zone uh, uh, up in the zone. I and mean, now he's been able to get guys out because they've been chasing above the zone. But watch this when he throws a strike. I mean, there's a fastball. Uh, you know, it's 91, but not a lot of movement. And what a swing. I mean, he keeps his arms in, gets the bat head to the ball, barrels it up is the term. And Chris Davis just takes a look and plays it off the wall. 24 for 46 is an Oriole for Beckham. Wow. That's six doubles, two triples, three homers. And the infield in again, Gary. And eight RBIs since Beckham came to the Orioles. Shattered bat, runner not going. They'll look him back, make the play as Lowry and back to second base. They almost were able to get Beckham, who thought the runner was going to go at third. Rickard, who did not. But he gets back in time. Yeah, Manny. Uh, uh, Manny swinging at a pitcher's pitch early in the count. And uh, to Brady's, you could see right there, he's got to be frustrated because you, you got to wait him out. Well, and I mean, it's it's just like, a low and away slider. Or they got the infield in. You're looking to hit it out of the infield. And then right here, a little interference right there. But Lowry will take the out at first. And it was an easy one. Manny never got the bat out of his hand. So the infield stays in. Runner still at second and third. Jonathan Scope is singled and struck out. Scope will pop it up. 
How about that? First ball hitting, two hitters with Ernest in scoring position, and there are two down. Try and explain those at bats. For every Orioles walk, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield contributes fifty dollars, supporting the American Diabetes Association. Two hundred ninety-four walks, fourteen thousand seven hundred dollars. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield encourages each of us to take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. Number 10, Adam Jones. Yeah, explain that approach. I don't yeah, get it. You know, well, I mean, you know, one pitch is a pitcher's pitch. So what? You don't swing at it, with, and you do, and, he, and then he makes a bad pitch, and it's go over swing and pops it up, and now you're hoping if you're Buck Showalter and you're the Orioles or you're an Oriole fan that Adam Jones is going to pick him up. But it is easy or much easier, even though the Orioles are very good with two outs and runners in scoring position, to hit a fly ball. Uh, this guy's not throwing 95, and you know what? You've, you've seen him enough now, you know what he can do. You've, you know, you already faced him, everybody in the lineup, so you know there's not a lot of movement. Slider can be flat. Take advantage of it. Adam Jones with the double in the first inning, picking up an RBI, fly out to right field. His last time up, Adam coming in ranked fourth in the league, 373 runners in scoring position. Pitch on the way will be taken away for a ball. The Orioles are now five for nine, nine opportunities already, and we're only in the fourth inning of this ball game. 2-0 count, so Adam's got one to go after right here. Adam already has five RBIs. Against the A's. Runners off second and third. And he's going to deliver again. Base hit into center field will score them both. No play at the plate. Adam Jones, three at bats, three RBIs in the ballgame. Well, Michael Brady tries to go to the slider, but uh, very much like the one to Adam to uh, Jonathan Scope, it stays up in the zone. And what's your approach? You don't over swing, you just try to hit it back up the middle, and it becomes hittable. I mean, again, it's just nice approach. He's not trying to do anything more than what he just did. So again, he picks up Scope and Machado. He had a couple of runs. Now got a six-run lead. 61 RBIs now for Adam Jones. That ball laced in the air to center, going back. Powell, and he'll catch it a line drive off the bat of Mancini. More two out RBIs. The Orioles are good at it, and that guy's the best. PNC for the achiever in you. Well, those, I mean, I like to see this report. They have checked those numbers out. He had 336 in his first year, so number uh, third round pick just a year ago. And apparently, he's a pretty good outfielder. He can do a lot of things, and he's only 22, I believe, or 22 uh, earlier in the year. So, love to see that when your high round uh, draft choices do well, working their way up to the big leagues. Chapman will lead it off goes after the first one down the line Mark Trumbull long run and it falls in 
He's got two and he'll go into second base with a double on the chalk. And that's that big area in the outfield. It's so hard to cover. Yeah, take a look and the ball tailing away and then you're hoping you don't want to play it into a double as it turns out because it's in the air so long and he just doesn't catch it. It's going to be a double anyway. Because the play is in front of you as you're coming down the first baseline and you know you, you see how far the right fielder has to run. You know who's playing out there. Five hits picked up now by the A's. Nine, ten, and zero oh for the Orioles. Three, five, and zero oh for the A's. Lead off batter on here in the fourth inning. Maxwell strikeout victim. First time up. He'll go after the heater upstairs. Well behind it, and gets behind on the count. Simeon, the number nine hitter, waiting on deck. Orioles getting the big innings in the first and fourth so far. Ace have been able to answer, not nearly enough, but they have been able to get on the board after the Orioles have scored. Maxwell will take it inside. Dylan Bundy up to 59 on the pitch count. A's third chance in the game with the runner in scoring position. They are one for two. Next to last is a team in that department in average. Soft little cut and uh, just flips the bat as he was so far out in front. Do anything with it. Yeah, he uh, a little bit hittable only because of uh, the height of it. So Maxwell, one and two. Chapman able to get a good lead at second. Beckham will move in a little bit on him now. One two pitch on the way, and he really climbed the ladder for yep. strikeout number seven. Yeah, just out of the zone. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, the book may be better low ball hitter, ride the ball up. And the other thing is, he is a very disciplined hitter, at least in limited bats that I've seen, unless you get ahead. And nobody able to do that, so he's frustrated. Didn't get the runner over. They're looking for runs. Ten strikeouts against the Angels for Bundy, career high. Last game, he's got seven already in this one. Marcus Simeon will take the pitch for a strike. One down, the runner remains on. At second base. At 247, a runner in scoring position number, which is below the league average for Dylan Bundy. Outfield deep on Marcus Simeon. Pitch to him, and he'll lace that one deep right field. Trump's right there. He's got it. Runner halfway will go back. Simeon retired. Two down. Powell at the top of the order. O's fans, give Mass and Orioles a like on Facebook so you never miss a moment of the action. Follow along for exclusive Mass and All Access segments, giveaways, breaking news, and more. That's Mass and Orioles on Facebook. So Buck Showalter sitting down after the Orioles got a couple more runs in that last half inning. Well, the dilemma for him, if, if Bundy doesn't pitch well, is okay, when do I go to the bullpen? I want to protect him. I also want to win. I mean, a lot of things going on when you get an early lead. Hopefully that won't be a factor. Pitch on the way uh, will be taken away. Boog Powell is looking forward to meeting Boog Powell when the team comes to Baltimore. He's already said I'm going to search him out and I'm sure Boog will be there with the barbecue and uh, this Boog Powell wants a chance to say hi to him and meet him. They tried little Mac as the uh, name for him his grandfather his father. And he all named the same. He is Herschel Mark Powell the fourth. And Little Mac was the first nickname they tried. That didn't go over very well with anybody. So his grandfather said, How about Boog? He didn't like it. He didn't like Boog when he was a kid. He was only six or seven. They started using it, but it grew on him, and everybody started calling him that in his school days, and it stuck. And he likes it a lot now. Pitch take it inside. Making his debut with the uh, A's. Has an asthma problem and was scheduled to start in the ball game last night. But the uh, asthma got the best of him. And Bob Melvin was saying for the game today, we just didn't feel right about trying to put him in a lineup. And he was struggling with that. So here he is today. That pitch is right there down the middle at 93. In at third base, Manny Machado. Powell has good speed. They think center field is his position. Lead off batter maybe steal some bases very aggressive player. 
That's from Bob Melvin, the manager, before the uh, game today. Yeah, he uh, likened himself to uh, Brett Gardner, who's had a terrific career, having a, a powerful year for the Yankees this year. More home runs, kind of back to where he was three years ago. I don't know if he'll ever hit 16, 17 home runs, but he's not in this park compared to Yankee Stadium, a little different. And you heard that Bob Melvin said, "Good, <laughs> real good." And a swing and a miss. Bundy has got eight strikeouts, two in this inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on. Lead off double. The A's could do nothing with it. Strikeouts continue to pile up. University of Maryland University College presents it 94 Major League Baseball went on strike this date first time in 90 years the World Series not played in 32 George Hubble younger brother of Carl traded from the Muskegee Chiefs to the Hutchison Wheat Shockers for four new baseballs he didn't quite attract the same attention that his brother did four new baseballs that's, that's a striking kind of deal don't you think. Well, back then. Yeah. Trumbo takes that one to the gap and left center field. That one is going to hit halfway up the wall on his way to second. Powell's throw is in time. And look who covered. Olsen, the first baseman. Well, Bob Melvin said he's a terrific first baseman. But again, you trail the runner when he comes around. And look at the throw from Powell. Well, Boog threw right handed. The other Boog, Powell, the MVP in 70. And Again, Nobody. good slide. Uh, you're out. Yeah. Again, that's what happens. You hit it so hard. And then great throw allows this play to happen. That's why they like Powell in center field. That arm came with distinction marked on it. And there you see him use it right there. So Trumbo, two hits in the ball game, but thrown out here, leading off the fifth inning, trying to extend a single into a double. Davis, a base hit, and he has struck out. And that's a long way. In that's this a part. long way. Yeah. This is not camping yards. Oh, 400 yeah. feet away. Yeah. Played it well and then gunned it in. It was interesting. They had both the other infielders, shortstop, third baseman, were in that double cutoff setup. So there wasn't anybody in picked up by Olsen and got down there and covered. And a high heater will get Chris. Yeah, still trying to get back on track. Did get a big uh, you know, single roller into right field early on. Uh, again, throwing it by him at 91. And Two down. Swing still in flux. Yep. Wellington Castillo coming to the plate. Fielder's choice RBI, and he has popped out. Castillo hitting 381 in the month of August coming into this ball game. Couple of home runs. Brady's delivery on the way and a swing and a miss. 
Five runs, six hits, third of an inning for the A's starter. Sean Manaya. Brady came on in relief in that first. He has surrendered a couple of runs since on three hits. The Orioles out hitting the A's 11 to 5. And that's a strike taken. So the series will wrap up with game four tomorrow. Jeremy Hellickson, seven and six. Kendall Graveman, who is two and three. 3 30. Owes extra, four o'clock for the ball game. And the Orioles will head to Seattle. Check swing and didn't go around, nor was it on the corner. So one ball, two strike count to the Oriole catcher. Lots of marks on the scorecard in this ball game on both sides. Four have been left on by Oakland. Three by two by the Orioles, but they of course have put up the nine runs. And another strikeout. That's five for Michael Brady. No runs on one hit, no errors. Nobody left on base. Orioles after a win here lead it by six. Break brought to you by T-Mobile. What a day in baseball. The Red Sox beat the Yankees 10-5. Look at Ben Intendi. Two home runs, six RBIs. Boston's won nine at ten. Led the they lead the Yankees by four and a half. The Jays beat the Pirates seven to two. Chris Rowley out of West Point and service time. One run, five hits, five and a third innings. How about that? And a three-nothing Indians win over the Rays. Clevenger. The uh, nine strikeouts in seven innings. Tampa Bay shut out five times in yeah. the last eight. Yeah, he beats, he beats uh, Chris Archer. Wow. We all know. Pitch. That ball will be fouled off outside of third base. Well, Ben Attendee hit a home run uh, last night you know, when the Yankees came back with what five in the eighth inning uh, to beat the Yankees or beat the Red Sox. Louis Severino today, the Yankee starters, the first Yankee in 100 years. Ground ball to short. Beckham's got it. Out recorded. In 100 years to give up 10 or more runs in fewer than five innings versus the Red Sox. Severino had that happen to him today. Yeah, and he was uh, about pitching as well or better than anybody on that staff. Well, that's what the Reds, you know, the Red Sox have a pretty good offensive club when things click, and obviously that was the case today. As to the Orioles tonight, sending what uh, 11 to the plate in the first. Jed Lowry up. Lowry is 0 for 2. He is grounded out, flied out. Lowry, the switch hitter against Bundy, infield shaded a little bit, playing him to pull. He'll take the pitch away. For Lowry, 241 right, 284 left, and nine out of ten home runs from this side of the plate. Orioles with a 9 3 lead. Bundy's delivery again towards that outside corner, but missed it. Yeah, a little change up trying to incorporate that third time through the order. And he certainly has the ability to do that in his first year as a starter. 
2 0 count on Lowry. Third time through the order has been the best for Dylan. 268 the first time, 246 the second, and 192 the opponent batting average the third time through. Better with time. Yeah, I think that goes again with his self evaluation and the fact that he, now that he has a slider, he has four pitches. Taking, that'll be in there for a strike. Oakland obviously needing some base runners here as their pitchers have not been able to hold down the Orioles offense and for the seventh time in the last 11 games eighth time in the past 11 they've given up the uh, six or more runs ground ball is going to go to first Bundy over to cover Davis the flip to him and there are two away here in the fifth inning. When the O's score, you score at McDonald's. And the more the O's score, the more Chicken McNuggets you score. Download McDonald's app today. Especially want to download it today. You're getting a lot of a lot of McNuggets coming your way. The <laughs> Orioles have nine runs. Two down, nobody on. Here's Chris Davis. He has struck out, delivered his 32nd home run of the year. That was good for two RBIs in the first inning. Davis buying to get to the top. 83 runs batted in. That one's going to be a base hit into right field. Just loop that one out against the shift. Second hit of the game, and that comes to two down here in the fifth inning. Yeah, I can, you'll, you, you can live with that. Uh, you know, when a guy that's hit oh, 42 home runs last year and got 32 already this year, soft single the other way. Healy has singled and struck out. Six hits on the board for the A's. Ryan Healy, he's had one hit, six at bats against the Orioles in this series. He's the designated hitter. Lifetime, three hits and 18 at bats against the O's. Pitch on the way, and it'll be outside for a ball. And we told you about the uh, what the 195 average the last 42 games, but how good was he early on? You know, he got called up last year, 73 games, hit over 316 home runs, and then started off 288 with 17 home runs in the first 67 games. And then the league is adjusted. More breaking balls, good fastball hitter. That is a fastball that will be there for a strike. He is 25 years old, another California native out of West Hills, California. In the Valley, he was saying. Another high draft choice. University of Oregon is where he played his college baseball. Bundy with a one ball, one strike count. Short lead at first, Chris Davis. High in the air to center. Adam Jones has it lined up. Warning track out. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left on base. Orioles remain on top, 9 3.
Washington Bryce Harper watch this after a heavy rain delay at first base he slips on the bag and obviously has injured his leg you see how his foot slid right across they are calling it a, a hyper extension of the leg and Bryce Harper down that was the first inning they waited three hours and five minutes because of a rain delay before they got it yeah. started. Well that's horrific and uh, wow. certainly you hope it uh, it's not long term and I mean long term the rest of the year. And yeah the field looked dry I mean of course you know when you have rain delays you cover the field most of the time but who knows about the bag. Wow. There's one you hope is not as bad as it looks. Yeah. Here is Joey Rickert. Record hit by a pitch last time up scored single first inning and scored. So Joey crossing a couple of times. We'll go after that one fight it foul down the right field line. Beckham and then Manny Machado will be due up. Orioles 9 11 and 0. A's are 3 6 and 0. The Orioles have left only two on base. They've gotten them on and gotten them in. Five have been left on by the A's. Last night a lot of base runners on and Orioles losing it by a score of five to four. Record again. Orioles have now gone to 500 in uh, one run ball games. They are 13 and 13 after a great start on the win side. Yeah, eight and one at one point when they were uh, 22 and 10. Big part of that was the fact they were winning all the one run ball games, which they're quite capable of doing. I don't know about winning eight out of nine, but. That's to the hole. That's going to be another base hit. So record on again. Three up, three on, including two singles and a leadoff here in the sixth inning. After the Sunday, August 20th game against the Angels, the kids are going to get a chance to run the bases presented by Wise Markets. The big Number league one. dreams come true for those ages 4 to 14. After the ball game, run the bases. Ticketsorioles.com or 888 848 Bird. Yeah, it looks like there's going to be some action in their bullpen. Of course, uh, Brady uh, did pitch five innings on Tuesday down at Triple A level. They got to be pretty happy that he's only given up the two runs. Tim Beckham will take the pitch on the inside corner. Bob Melvin said we needed some pitching help because the bullpen was worn out. And then I look and they sent me a guy who pitched the night before, <laughs> so he couldn't use him. Oh one count. Pretty good lead at first base by Joey Rickard. Not going up the middle. No, yeah. Honest to gosh. He apparently you can't get him out. And a three hit ball game with two doubles and a single for Beckham. Well I asked him today. I mean uh, and I knew what the answer was going to be. I said have you ever ever had one of these hot streaks and he goes not that I can remember maybe a little late. Man, oh man. Yeah, I mean, getting, getting a lot of pitches to hit, and just, I mean, the approach is unparalleled. You know, I mean, he's not trying to overswing. You know, if he gets a breaking ball that's hanging, maybe he pulls it, otherwise, shoot it to right. And we've seen triples, doubles, home runs, you name it. It's his seventh three hit ball game of the year. And he's piled those up, as we said, since coming to the Orioles. He's got. He's been on four times a walk scored in the first double two RBIs in in the first inning and then doubled and scored in the fourth now he gets a single. So the Orioles get another chance to get another one to pitch outside to Manny for a ball. Well there was a great article in the Baltimore Sun Eduardo Encina who was with us in, in Anaheim uh, wrote a whole thing about how Bobby Dickerson third base coach and field instructor trying to work with Tim Beckham. And how uh, helpful J.J. Hardy's on the day disabled list has been able to do. You know, we talked about him. Mean, he has good hands, arm strength, a lot of athleticism, a lot of movement, all the abilities to play shortstop. But it's got to kind of slow down the clock. Yep. And he's done a nice job of that. And then the hitting is a bonus. So Liam Hendricks warming up in the bullpen. We've seen him in these games. Yeah, he pitched the first night in here. Manny Machado ground ball down to third runners going to go there's one relay over to first he'll get it. so the double play turn and it will put Joy Rickard over at third base but there are two down yeah we told you about the fact that Brady was a starting pitcher and he gets him to roll over on a changeup 
And when he does that, Chapman can play third. Easy double play ball, throw a little bit offline, but Lowry with plenty of time. So two down, a runner at third base, and Jonathan Scope. Jonathan, a base hit. He has struck out and uh, popped out. Scope with another RBI chance. Infield way back. Jonathan will take the pitch inside for a ball. Scope coming in behind Cruz with the 84 RBIs. He is tied for ninth in home runs starting the day. In hits, he ranks seventh. In runs, he ranks seventh in the American League. Delivery is foul back. Oh, a little bit of a chance to. Uh Get a little bit closer to Nelson Cruz. See the two of them in Seattle when the Orioles head up there after the ball game uh, tomorrow. They've named their starters. Stay with the five: Gosman, Miley, and Jimenez. Gallardo and Gonzalez will both be pitching up there. They haven't named their middle starter. Ooh! Hit him right. On him, he had nowhere to go. Yeah, it kind of turns in though, so it's going to be painful, but not, you know, the, the elbows and the uh, wrists and the hands get out of the way. So I guess the two seamer that just runs in and then right the back of the tricep missed the, uh, he's got protection, but not that high. Almost you know, right there, you can see, I mean, you just can't get out of the way, but you turn away from it, try to keep your hands, wrist, arms, and even your face out of the way. Jonathan Scope's been hit by a pitch 10 times this year. He leads the Orioles far and away in that department. And that will be it. As Brady will come out of the ball game. He sort of held the fort. He gave up only a couple of runs thus far. 9-3 Orioles on top. As presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. So a 9 3 lead the Orioles looking to add to it. Liam Hendricks. Yeah he came in on Thursday gave up a couple of runs in fact against the Orioles he's given up 17 runs and 17 innings but they were unearned. Uh, Marcus uh, Simeon uh, made an error throwing error. Orioles were able to add a couple of runs. And Adam Jones gets another shot. Pitch on the way to him. That'll be taken down low for a ball. Adam already with three RBIs. A double in the first inning. And he scored. Along with the RBI he picked up. And then had a two out single. In the fourth inning. And drove in two. Yeah, and Hendricks a yeah, yeah, fastball slider. So they know about it. There's the fastball at 94 outside corner. Got a text from uh, Patrick Skillen. He's in Belfast, Ireland, watching this game. Somewhere about four o'clock in the morning, Gary. Did he? Why would so, a man be up at four o'clock in the morning? Well, he wanted to see this offense. There you go. 
solid answer. <laughs> Swung out and missed by the only, the only reason I was I hoping think you were going to yeah. say Guinness. But <laughs> well, yeah. that too. That too, yeah. I'd be having a nice tea or two. Yes. <laughs> a one ball, two strike count. Belfast, Ireland. See, that's baseball. That's baseball. People around the world. Get a franchise over there. Pitch on the way and foul the other way by Adam. Probably get a new stadium there quicker than they've been able to get one here. <laughs> yeah, they need it. Well, I tell you what, you know, it's it, it, it. I mean, big crowd tonight because of the fireworks, but the fans here. And I remember when we used to hook up with the A's when they won consecutive World Champs championships, 72, three, and four. Always great fans. I mean, passionate. Love the game. Organization regrouping. Pitch on the way, runners off first and third. Adam with the 300 average, with runners in scoring position and two down. Talk so much about the fact that the Orioles have been at the top in that department, getting the two out runs coming into the series. They were third in the uh, American League and runs scored with two away. Well, he did that, and uh, when you go back to the, what the fourth, uh, you know, runners in second and third, not very good at bats by Manny Man. Machado and uh, Jonathan Scope he picks him up. Pitch on the way and a jam shot will get him. So Liam Hendricks comes on and gets the out. No runs on a couple of hits. Orioles unable to extend it. 9 3. Toyota. Get in the game this season with a new Toyota from Antwerpen Toyota. And by the University of Maryland Medical System, be a part of something great. The gorgeous sunsets we've had here on the West Coast and another one underway right now. As the Orioles lead going to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Olsen, Chapman, and Maxwell do up against Bundy. He has struck out eight, walked two. And given up the three runs on six hits, two home runs off him. Chris Davis of Oakland hitting one in the first inning, a couple of RBIs, solo shot by Matt Olson in the second. And then he struck him out the next time with a breaking ball. And boy, that line drive he hit got out of here in a hurry. It's one thing when they tell you to hit got power, and then you see it. And a big swing and a miss over the top. Dylan at him. Looking for something yeah, else. Exactly. And you know, he's shaking his head. Well, I mean, that can be the difference. Where up here, you get a book on somebody, and then the good pitchers, and Bundy's got four pitches, he can adjust. You know, give up the home run, and you try to adjust from there. Pitch yeah. will be inside. But it's funny, uh, when Bob Melvin talks about it, and of course, Bob was, you know, a terrific catcher, catch and throw guys, he said, you know, maybe the swing, because he's a big guy at 6'5, is a little bit long, but he's got a good eye. He just has to not swing at those balls off the plate. And he doesn't, and it was away. And especially the ones up and in. So a three ball, one strike count on Olsen. Lead off man, Powell, get on the first inning they scored. Lead off home run, Olsen, that was in the second inning. Lead off double in the fourth. 
but they did not score. Pitch on the way by Bundy and a big swing on that. So the count goes full 3 2. That was up. Yep. You know, Chase, it, you take it. I mean, you're looking for walks, but, you know, young hitter, aggressive hitter. Like we said, he hit a home run every 12 plus at bats in, in, in the minor leagues, but a little different up here. Shift on against him, goes into the shift. Davis will backhand it. Monday to cover. The flip is there in time. One away, bottom half of the sixth inning. Lock in your Birdland Summer. Reserve your seats for the upcoming promotions, including the 25th anniversary Oriole Park replica ballpark, Orioles cap presented by DAP, Orioles hooded sweatshirt, and more. Tickets, Orioles.com. Saw a note today uh, out of Chicago. Uh, good friend. Bruce Levine of CBS has been a erstwhile journalist reporter there for a long time. Says the Orioles are interested in Miguel Gonzalez and Derek Holland with the White Sox. And yes, that is the Miguel Gonzalez. The Orioles believe they have got a shot at the wild card, which coming into this, they certainly do. Only two games behind the second wild card spot. Maybe looking again to add to that pitching. We'll see if any of that comes to fruition. Well, again, Anthony Santana, who's a Tanner, Tanner, who's a switch hitter, he has to be on the roster if the Orioles are going to retain his rights to him because of a Rule Five guy. But I think they need to get somebody like Michael Bourne, like they did last year. He really helped down the stretch. You know, a veteran player, left-handed hitter, or maybe give you a little more versatility off the bench. But maybe Santana is going to have to be that guy. At least till you get to September, if they want to keep him. Yeah. And apparently he's having terrific numbers and you know, switch hitter with great power. Chapman with a double and a strikeout will take the pitch up high. One down here in the sixth inning. Orioles have a lot of personnel decisions to make in a very few days. On the 15th, Brian Flaherty is going to be ready technically to come back. Probably J.J. Hardy's not coming back till the roster is expanded. Pitch up high again, and that's what Dylan didn't yeah. want to do. Third walk. Well, they'll look at the pitch counts. And, you, know, you know, again, pitching with regular uh, rest, and the pitch, you know, he's uh, into what is 139th inning after 109 last year. So you're right, he didn't want to do it, but he did, and uh, wouldn't be surprised to see the bullpen coming up. Pitch count not horribly high at 90, 91, or 92, but. Again, you want to maintain it. You got a big lead. If you're going to bring somebody in, sometimes you want to do it. You can't have a clean inning because you have a runner at first, but do it before you really get into trouble. Maxwell has struck out twice the Oakland catcher. They're ready to do the race, getting ready, limbering up. Three giants of baseball. Well, I've seen Eck run, I've seen Raleigh run. And I helped Ricky Henderson get to the Hall of Fame. I know how he can run. There he is, looking things over. <laughs> kind, of, kind of a bird's eye view, you might say. And uh, yeah, Raleigh. <laughs> always looming. That's what happens when you get to the Hall of Fame as a uh, relief pitcher. Even though when uh, we first came out here, Raleigh Fingers was a starter. Mm -hmm. And then he would, of course, be a closer here. You know, closer back then, two or three innings. Maxwell takes the ball left center field. That's going to be a base hit. Chapman will make the turn at the third. Adam Jones throws into second base. A's not going away. They're down by six, but they cover the corners here with one out. And that's going to get Darren O'Day up in the bullpen. And you know, it's a nice approach because you are down by six, but you're getting singles. That's the way it turned out. I mean, he pitches them away. He hits it that way. And that's what you got to do in this ballpark. They could maybe translate a little different when you get on the road. So Roger McDowell out. And there is Darren O'Day, the time of the game where you know, Gibbons pitched last night, Brock pitched last night, Brock pitched the night before. Orioles with a 12th blown save last night. As we said, not many of those. Third fewest in the league for the Orioles. Brock would take the loss in the ball game. Santiago Castillo would pick up the win coming out of the pen 
Had a lot of hits. There were 20 hits in the ball game last oh, night. Divided sure equally between the two ball clubs. We're up uh, in this one to 20. 13 of those coming to the Orioles. Well, the uh, the numbers, and we got another number today. What's the not? That was the ninth time that the A's, after trailing after seven, came back, and that's the most in Major League Baseball. Yep. Tells you how hard it is sometimes when you're. And again, it was only four to three. They would win the game four to five to four, but. So. You know the fact that Maxwell couldn't get the second uh, double play is still in order. And Simeon will swing through it. He's sitting only 206 with runners in scoring position for Marcus Simeon coming into the ball game. Batting ninth, he has walked, flied out. He's had a couple of hits and eight at bats in this series. Runners off first and third. Simeon will take the pitch down low for a ball. Yeah, and they know he's a good fastball hitter, or at least they should. And you know, again, double play balls, a slider. Just threw him two. Last time up, he would like to do more, but again, he was able to line one out. High fastball up and away, line out to Trumbo and right. That would get a run in. Simeon with the outfield deep and straight away on him for the Orioles. Delivery by Bundy to him, and that will miss way up high. And Bundy's tank may be getting close yeah. to E. Starting to be all over the place on these pitches. Yeah, you get a little bit tired. You come out of your wind up a little bit early, and the result is the ball gets up. Now, he's a high ball pitcher anyway, fly ball pitcher. Demonstrably so. Two ball, one strike count coming here. Bundy's delivery, and that'll catch the inside corner for a strike. Yeah, perfectly thrown. He's looking away. Right to the glove. So Simeon, two ball, two strike count on him. Lead runner Chapman who had a walk. Maxwell a single at first. Two two by Bundy. Ooh, ah, look out, head high, and held on to by Castile. Yeah, you don't want to be pitching up here because that's very close to hitting him in the face, the head, the helmet. One thing about Dylan Bundy, I mean, he's not afraid. He doesn't. He doesn't pitch up here around the head, but he'll go in. We saw that. Uh, he knocked down uh, Andrelton uh, Simmons. And that ball entirely too close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't. You don't want to pitch up there. So a three-two delivery, and Simeon will go down swinging as he came back with a slider away. Well, but uh, just in case you do, you know, he almost hits him in the side of the helmet, which you never want to do. And then look at this slider. Perfect pitch. It's the pitch of choice, and he executes it. So he is one shy of his season and career high in strikeouts, which is 10. Got those against the Angels in his last outing, and he has struck out nine in this game. More importantly, at the moment, there are two down, and here is Boog Powell. A walk, a single, and a strikeout. Yeah, Gary, conventional defense because of his ability to bunt. Pitch will be taken away. Manny has played in against Powell. In all four of the plate appearances he has had in the game. Yeah, 333 hitter at Triple A with a, a little bit of power. Up here coming in was only 194. Runners off first and third. Powell on a big cut will foul it straight back. So Bundy with a one ball, one strike count. He's trying to cut into that lead a little more. They had gotten a bit closer. The Orioles led it 7 0 first, two in the first for the A's, then they got another in the second, 7 3. But the Orioles, two big runs in that fourth inning. One ball, one strike delivery on the way. Powell will fist that one back. Well, the one thing about Dylan Bundy, and we've seen, uh, you know, we showed you earlier how progressively, I mean, uh, started out great, struggled in June and July, and if he can win the night, uh, he'll have won four in a row. But the ERA is coming down because of what he just did there. He's thrown changeups, he's thrown sliders, gave up a base hit on a fastball early, so he remembers that. You learn from that. Pitch on the way, Powell yeah. again fouls it back. Powell is 24, made his debut with Seattle. And in those ball games, he, Jim said he hit a buck 94, 23 games. That covered three different times that he was up with Seattle. Played all of the outfield positions, but center is where the A's believe he will call home. Runners off first and third, one two delivery on the way, and Heat at 94 gets it. So there's the 10th K. 
20 strikeouts in the last two ball games for Dylan Bundy. Time brought to you by Miller Lite. Seven runs first inning for the Orioles. Manny Machado picked up a double to get it in. Jones a double. And Mancini a base hit. Trumbo, Davis, all picking up RBIs in the first inning. Seven runs on eight hits for the Orioles. And a great jump lead. And uh, Beckham had himself a big night. And then uh, a few seconds ago, after Dylan Bundy came off, Showalter uh, said, I think that's enough. Yeah. Well, he pitched great back to back games with 10 strikeouts. You know, give him an early lead, went to the prevent defense, something you do in the NFL with a, with a big lead, and then settled down. And there is Dylan. There is Buck. Excuse me, guys, but you're done. <laughs> okay. Liam Hendricks on. He got the final out strikeout in the last inning. Works here in the seventh. Trey Mancini, the first inning single, RBI. He has since flied out to center and to right. Mancini, Trumbo, and Davis, seventh inning for the Orioles. That'll be a bouncer. For Michael Brady, who came on five of the third innings, four runs, seven hits. He didn't walk anybody and struck out five. After the starter, Sean Manaya, third of an inning, five runs, six hits. Hendricks delivery to him. That's going to go right off the glove of Olsen and no play. That'll be a base hit and a two hit game for Mancini. Yeah, if you can't hit the ball as hard as Trey can, uh, can hit it, uh, Olsen's going to catch that ball. But I mean, he hits a, a low line drive. And again, you can see Olsen, nice reflexes, but off the end of his glove and right there. Another base hit. You see Hendricks doing a nice job of covering the base, but ball just too far away. 34 multi hit games for the Orioles rookie. Well, just think how steady he's been. You know, you know Bob Melvin said, uh, Where did he come from? And I said, Well, he was always a guy in the, through the minor leagues talking about uh, Trey Mancini. They could hit. Dean Albany told me that years ago. He said, He can, he can gap to gap. He's the best young hitter in the Oriole organization. Pitch will be taken for a strike on the corner by Trumbo. Mancini's just out of the top 10 in uh, multi hit games. The only Oriole in that group is Jonathan Scope. But uh, Mancini all of a sudden is not so far behind him in multi hit affairs. 39 for his scope in the year. Trumbo got jammed a bit, fouls it back. Pretty good cut. Yeah, actually, uh, you know, I love the inside out swing. That's how Scope hit the double to right center. Trumbo's had a multi hit game, double single, got thrown out. In the fifth inning, trying to extend the base hit into a double. He has scored a run in the game. So Trumbull back with the bat moving again. He's had four hits and ten at bats here in the series. Yeah, but not you this get, time. Yeah, you got a couple of pitches to hit, and uh, you know it's not always easy at 93, 94. And then Hendricks, who's when he's on, this is a pitch that can get a lot of guys out, especially righties. 
good slider. Yeah, what is a good slider? It, you know, it slides down. It looks like a fastball, and then darts down on the way righty to righty. So one away here in the seventh. Here's Chris Davis. Davis, a couple of strikeouts and a base hit. He too had an RBI in that first inning. Orioles looking to put this one away and have a chance to win a series in game four tomorrow after these teams split the first two. Orioles on the road have won only five series this year. They have lost 11 and they have tied three. Oakland here at home have won 10 series, lost six, and tied three. Davis with a 2 0 delivery goes after one and can't connect with it. 94. Well, again, the hands, you know, I was talking to Scott Cool by the Oriole hitting instructor along with uh, Howie Clark, and, you know, the hands stay, stay high and then they drop. And I said, Scott, well, how come you don't maybe drop the hands? He said, well, then he, you know, can't get them back up. So, I mean, they're at least trying to, you know, think things out, but it's hard to do. But again, you have so little time to see the pitch, react to it, discern what it is, and then try to get the bat hit. And it's been a struggle. Three and one on him. And Cini off first base, and that's there. So the heater will take it full, three and two. And again, if you're three and one, I mean, you know, you're probably sitting there saying, well, that's a really good hitting count, but when you're not seeing the ball, it isn't. There's nothing, there isn't any. Unless maybe you speed the bat up, hang a breaking ball. Chris hitting just a 111 so far this month. We'll file that one back. You see, there's a pretty level swing, but just fouled it off. And when it's hot, it might have been sailing into the seat somewhere. Davis will wait again on a 3 2. Hendricks pitch will be inside. So the Orioles are the one away. Have runners on at first and second. Only the second walk Orioles have picked up in the ballgame. MLB.com Advantage, your number one uh, mobile app for live Orioles baseball. Stay connected with the fully customizable experience. Orioles home screen icons, app features. You also get Statcast news, broadcasts, and more. Download MLB.com at that today. So Castillo, chance to keep his 10 game hit streak alive. He struck out, popped out. Hit into a fielder's choice, did pick up an RBI, and he scored in the first inning. Runners on at first and second base. Lots and lots of base runners for the Orioles in this ball game. Six for 12 with runners in scoring position. Two more out there now, and Mancini and Davis. Deliver to Castillo, he'll file it back. Yeah, Henrik's uh, very much like the uh, starter, Sean Manaya, kind of those roller coaster uh, years. Uh, seven earned runs in his last seven and a third innings. Uh, over the last 27 games, the ERA is almost nine runs a game after really being good. Right? So, first, what, 24 games, giving up three runs a game, now close to nine. Yeah, Seal for one off him. And the pitch is there, and he walked away quickly because he knew it. And he can when he's on his game, and you can see big, strong kid out of uh, Australia. He can throw the ball downhill, and he's got a good arm, perfectly thrown outside middle. He has struck out three of the five batters that he has faced in the game. Two swinging, and that one called. So Joy Rickard will try for the two-out RBI. Rickard has had a base hit, been hit by a pitch. And another base hit and a run scored. He's crossed the plate twice, in fact, in the ball game, and has two on here. The delivery, a check swing. Did he go? Yes. Jim Wolf down at first on the call. Brother of Randy, who umpired behind the home plate. Orioles on top by six. Trying to add more to it. And we'll pop it up. 
where the foul territory comes into play. Olsen over. And he'll put it away. No runs on a hit. Two are left on. Seventh inning stretch time with the Orioles up 9-3. Is going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. Seventh inning stretch time, fireworks night. Orioles got to it early. Uh, so out. Yeah, Dylan Bundy uh, yeah. pitches well, strikes out 10, ten second consecutive uh, game, and then they get him a bunch of runs. They, they average over six runs a game for him, takes advantage of it. Darren O'Day, who came in and pitched on Thursday night here, inning with a couple of hits, a run uh, with a base on balls and a strikeout. So Again, other than that six game period where he threw four home runs, uh, he's pretty much back to where he usually is. You got Pender out the other night in the appearance, and he's leading it off here, number two in the order. Pender has gone 0 for 3, 3 for 10 in the series. Lowry and then Davis. Smith warming up in the bullpen with their starter having gone only a third of an inning. He used only two out of the pen, which is pretty amazing. Smith uh, struggled. He, of course, pitched in the bullpen and as a starter. We saw him on Thursday night. Did not pitch well. The A's pitching their overall 12th in ERA. Starters a 10th in the bullpen. Second highest ERA for a bullpen in the league. Darren O'Day, one ball, one strike count. Chad Pender watches that one go down low. And Pender will get ahead on the count here, two and one. All these young faces coming to the plate on this Oakland team is a different lineup almost every night as they shuffle players around in and out trying to get a look see at what they have here and the young players they have brought up. Bender will chase that one away. Yeah, and this is always a kind of a baseball life lesson right here having to face somebody like Darren O'Day. And of course you mentioned Pender came off the DL with hamstring problem but he can play everywhere. Bob Melvin saying, "Hey, we've got to give him a day off, even though he's very young. Every four or five days, so maybe he'll get tomorrow off." Today's delivery to him. Pender reaches. Beckham fires over. Good stretch made by Davis and Pender. The first out here in the seventh inning. Yeah, again that uh, in an article by uh, Bardo and Cena just talking about uh, you know when you replace a guy like J.J. Hardy, they, his nickname is Robo because it's, and I remember what the, the, the late uh, 
you know a lot of baseball guys would talk about it, the two the, the two out shortstop when the balls hit to the shortstop the good ones the Mark Belanger's the Aparicio's the Cal's everybody runs off the field because you know it's going to be a play and that's that's kind of the the mission to, to, to get for uh, Tim Beckham so it, just things become routine JJ on the left there ball in the air to center field Adam Jones Lowry pitching and up. I was asking uh, Craig Gentry about the uh, in the outfield here. We said how it looks like on the warning track it's dark. Whether or not, in fact, for them when they are playing, does it feel that way? And he said no. He said, does it look that way? Yeah, because it, you see those shadows that are back there. You, the player almost disappears, and, but they can see the ball well. He said, don't have any trouble following it back on the warning track to the wall. Just we do. Record is in uh, right field. Gentry is in left. Yeah, it gets real dark when you get to dead center on the warning track. Yeah. So a couple of outs here in the seventh inning. Chris Davis, a homer, a single, two for three in the ball game. Thirty-second home run came in the first inning. Yeah, well, it kind of gets them back in the game in a sense. I mean, they're already trailing seven nothing. Take a look at your. Uh, there's your exit velocity at 105. This is home run number 32, 42 of them last year. Well, 74 home runs the last two seasons. Olsen would hit another one. There. Get him a little bit closer. Lifts that one high in the air to left center field. It's playable. Jones over. And Adam will put that one away in a good inning for O'Day. Retires the side in order. Orioles remain on top, 9-3. Yeah, I mean, red hot. Uh, you, you name it. You know, another multi, actually, three hits on the night. You pitch him in, gets a bat head to it. He's played very well at shortstop. So, uh, and again, our pitching change. Lexus the Taos in the area's number one volume Lexus dealer, seven straight years. Come see why. Lexus of Towson.com. And now, our Jiffy Lube pitching change brought to you by, of course, Jiffy Lube. Jiffy Lube stores now do break services. Stop in and let Jiffy Lube uh, perform a free break inspection today. So, not Chris Smith, but Josh Smith, who uh, signed again and came, came over last year and again can start. You know, fastball around 91, cutter, slider, change up. Seems like everybody has a cut fastball nowadays. And he's actually pitched very well for him as of uh, lately. Second time up and back to the to the big leagues, and uh, only a run in his last uh, five of one of his last six appearances. Liam Hendrick worked an inning in the third, gave up one hit, one walk, and there were three strikeouts. So Smith, the third out of the bullpen for the A's, his first pitch to Beckham fouled off down the bullpen area. Look at that! Ooh. Long run and Olsen goes in hard and awkward. Up against
against the facade gets up though looks like he's all right. Yeah you know again if you're six five if you don't do this you're going to catapult yourself right over that railing and right there catches it nice catch except it somewhere along the line it bounces well, again great effort. How else do you catch it. Well, to see him get up and smile. Back up with the three hit ball game two doubles single walk scored two runs has driven in two. You keep thinking he can't have a better night than what he had last night and then the next night comes and he has a better night. It's just <laughs> amazing. Well the consistency I mean he's just. He's on fire and uh, getting good pitches to hit not missing them. 12 game hit streak now. Smith's delivery to him. Beckham will take the pitch. It'll be down low for a ball. See, I always looked at you know when you're pitching and you know you know a guy's hot or not, whatever it doesn't really matter. And you throw a pitch, you always kind of notice how he took it. And even there, that's you know slider. I mean, he took it like he's so he's seeing the ball well. And sometimes just the way a guy takes a pitch tells you, hey, better not do that again. 30-year-old right-hander will deliver outside at 91. The Josh Smith falls behind three and one on the Orioles leadoff batter. Beckham will be followed by Machado and Scope. Orioles bullpen going to get active again. You know, Smith last year with Cincinnati, uh, 32 Swing games. Yeah, there's a good breaking ball. Really good. Yeah. Yeah, he ended up going three and uh, three with an ERA of about 4.7. Had a couple of stints with the Reds last year. Tall glass of water warming up in the bullpen. Three ball, two strike count. And Beckham will get on swinging. Yeah, so there's the curveball took some off, and it takes those kind of quality pitches uh, to be able to get Tim Beckham out. Josh Smith able to execute him. Yeah, there's the big hook. You're like four miles per hour slower than the hard slider he swung through. One down. Here in the top of the eighth, Manny Machado. He's had an RBI with a double. One for four in the ball game, three for 13 in the series for Manny. Came in hitting 319 month of August. He's had three home runs this month. Smith's delivery to him, and that'll be fouled off the end of the bat. Orioles jumping out. First inning and not looking back in this ball game. He's tried to close in a little bit. Four runs is as close as they've come. All the scoring was done early. Orioles last scored in the fourth inning and the last runs across for Oakland, second inning. Kids all making noise as they get close to fireworks time. Ground ball is going to go to short. Simeon. Manny retired. Two down. Jonathan coming up. Scope of the base hit his first time up. He has gone one for three, hit by a pitch, and yeah, stranded in the sixth inning. Jonathan right now at the 300 mark among the categories in which he's in the top 10 in the league he's second in extra base hits seventh in hits seventh in runs sixth in multi hit games starting the day Jonathan will take the pitch away for a ball yeah I guess if you're a Kendall Graveman uh, who was your opening day starter and has had a couple of bouts in the minor league with shoulder problems. At least he's seeing if you make good pitches, you got a chance. If not, that's what happens when 11 guys go to the plate in the first. You know, it's that's funny, but slow. I, Gary, you know, sometimes you, you can be wild in the strike zone and you throw too many strikes, and that's what Manaya did. Yep, and I never got a chance to establish anything. You walk Beckham in a series of doubles and singles and so forth. 
And a swing and a miss. Big cut taken by Jonathan. Jeremy Hellickson. Kendall Graveman going tomorrow. 3.30 O's extra. 4 o'clock for the ball game. And it looks like the Orioles will have a chance to take three out of four. A victory in this game, leaving up their road trip at three and three. And that one's going to be outside, trying to get him to chase. Smith really coming across his body on that one. So the scope, three ball, one strike count. Orioles on this 10 day road trip during which there is no time off, which is a bit unusual when you have a road trip of 10 games. Pitch to him, and uh, he'll foul the back. Take a look at our league leaderboard, Coons.com. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. Yeah, that is more than he had last year. Home runs uh, for Jonathan, uh, right where it was at 25. 3 2 delivery to him, check swing. Did he go? Nope. So Jonathan is on with a walk, two down in the eighth inning. And yeah, even uh, the kind of year where the walks for the first time in his career are. Becoming more plentiful. And that's a perfect example. That was a pretty good breaking ball. Did not 10, after overswing it early, Jones. took it. So Adam Jones will get another shot at it. Adam already, three RBIs, one on a double, two on a single. He has struck out and flied out in the other two times at bat. Adam in with two down. Looks that first pitch away for a ball. Last 25 games, hitting over 310. 21 RBIs over that span. Adam was doing really well leading off and moving to the four spot. Doesn't change any of it. Back into the screen. Yeah, Buck Showalter always says it doesn't really matter. Hitters, you know, players don't care where they hit in the lineup and all that. I, I, and that's probably true. I just want to be in the lineup, but I, I think it's especially true for, for Adam. You know, last year when they moved him after the Royals got swept down in Houston, he took it as kind of the, uh, the, the red badge of courage. I'll, I'll turn this around and same here. And like you pointed out the other night, Gary, like, you know, just because you lead off the first time in, in the game, it doesn't mean it's going to happen the whole ball game. Jones takes it down low. Nope, doesn't. Yeah, I just think it, what it really matters, and I think we saw it with Joey Rickard early last year, where he led off, hit early, and as a young Rule Five guy, he said, "Well, I got to take a lot of pitches and all that," and it, it, it was hard for him to be as successful as he could be until they said, "Hey, you can be aggressive." Adam takes it inside. Adam has hit in all four of the top spots and only the top four. The 26 times leading off, he batted second, 55 games, third, 11, and this is the 18th time that he's batted in the cleanup spot. Three ball, one strike count. Right hander's delivery to him, broken bat towards left field, and that's going to be a base hit. Scope will stop at second base. Three hit ball game for Adam. Two on, two down. Yeah, you'll take a dunker in the eighth. Right off the fist, got it up and in. He's looking fastball. That's why he's able to maybe get a little bit better work because he's cheating a little bit. That ball kind of in, and you can see him maybe somewhere around the trademark. He knows it's going to fall. So, Adam. Keeps the inning alive. He's on at first base. Jonathan Scope down at second. Already with two hits in the ball game. Trey Mancini. Mancini, two singles, a run scored. RBI, two for four in the ball game. Jones, by the way, is 35th multi hit game and his 10th three hit ball game. Trey Mancini will take the pitch inside for a ball and the Orioles have piled up 15 hits in the game. Yeah it's a nice uh, first inning when you get eight of them. Right out of the gate. Eight in the first. Smith with a delivery. 
off the fists again a long run this time there's room and Olsen will put it away. Orioles retire top of the eighth inning no runs a hit they leave two on keep that nine three lead. Still in Bunny looking for win number 12. Uh, if he able to win, uh, winning record on the road, only Oriole pitcher would have that. So 10 strikeouts, back to back games. Look at all the breaking balls, the high heaters once he establishes that. So just when you thought you knew what was coming, and for the 59th time, double digit strikeouts for the Oakland A's. Back to back 10 strikeout games for Dylan Bundy. Geico 15 minutes to save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit Geico.com to see how much you could save. Uh, Miguel Castro on. Uh, he's pitched uh, kind of briefly after pitching six innings against the Tigers on this uh, road trip. So he will come in and of course he inherits a six run lead. Throw strikes and of course three pitches. Anywhere from 93 to 98 or 9 on occasion. And again, uh, that number, probably a little bit higher than most of the Oriole pitchers, but still pretty good numbers. So, a uh, couple of hits, two innings uh, down against the Angels with a, a run. Ryan Healy leads it off, takes a strike. Dylan Bundy with a double digit strikeouts last game in this game's the first Oriole pitcher with consecutive double digit strikeouts since Mike Pusina. July of 1999. The delivery by Castro, and that'll be lined into right center field for a base hit. Orioles will get over there to cut it off as Rickert will. So a leadoff single, Healy. So he's had a two hit ball game, two singles, two for four. Yeah, he's happy, and uh, you know, good fastball hitter, great approach. Uh, Darren Bush, the hitting instructor, the, in the last couple of years here, got to be happy with that. Ready. Good hitter in his own right, taking the gloves. First base coach. I mean, you're still looking for six outs. Yeah, got to get him. Home run, second inning for Olson. He has struck out, grounded out. Power hitting left hander against Castro. Day worked an inning, zeros across. Bundy, three runs, seven hits over six, as you saw. Effective, very. And the pitch cuts inside for a ball. Ace played 13. And 14 against the East team so far this year. The Orioles, after their 10th win against the West, they are 9 and 9 at the moment. Shift on, double play depth. Castro's delivery to him way inside. Jack knifes away. Yeah, I think the dilemma for a young pitcher, and Miguel Castro is only 22, is that, you know, again, I mean, you're learning after having shoulder surgery, you're learning to pitch. And not starting, so he could be pitching every other day, and he's certainly capable of doing that. But they give you a scouting report. Sometimes it doesn't match up to your strengths, and you got to figure out what you can do. And you know, again, they're looking for strikes, and, and you know the last thing, and Buck and Solo are going to have to do it. If you don't throw strikes, you're going to have to get somebody up. He doesn't want to be doing that. 
because as we said, nine uh, nine wins trailing after seven, the most in baseball by the A's. Take them back in this one. The Orioles season is over. Three zero count. Well, that's why Buck, if he doesn't throw strikes, he's going to have to get somebody up. Yep. It's going to be a devastating loss. I mean, last night was a tough one. The Warriors just don't lose those kind of ball games where they have the lead, and they did with a couple of runs in the eighth inning that put it away for the A's. Three ball, one strike count on Olsen. Got to throw a strike here, as Jim said. Healy off first base. Fun to watch, but fun. Yeah, and, and sometimes that's what's going to happen because uh, you got to throw a strike. He knows that. He's a little bit too quick. But it does get you back into the count. Full count. Davis holding the runner, Healy at first. 3 2 delivery on the way and a major league pop up. That's in shallow center field. Adam Jones had a lot of time to get in underneath it, so he'll put it away. And one down. So we were talking about losses via the blown lead, the fewest losses. Uh, Orioles, Red Sox, and yeah, the Yankees, Indians, Astros. And what are those? Uh, all those teams have in common, especially the, the, the top four good bullpen. And of course, the Yankees, have, you know, again, if they had had Britain all year, maybe that number would be a little bit lower. Yankees, of course, 10 5 losers to the Red Sox today. Uh, the Red Sox extend their lead to four and a half games over the Yankees, which will be taken down low. Tampa Bay just has not been able to sustain anything. They lost again today to Cleveland, 3 to nothing. They are in third place. To Tampa Bay not gaining any ground on anybody. They're eight games out now. The Orioles are. At the moment, starting the day eight and a half behind. Castro with the runner on at first base, 2 0 count, falls behind again, this time on Chapman. Chapman has doubled, walked, and struck out. One hit in the series. He's gone one for six. 2 0 delivery. Castro will get a strike on that one. 95 and the count goes to 2 1. Yeah, I mean, you got to think. I mean, last year, because of shoulder problems, he hardly pitched at all. And, uh, pitched like 32 innings. So, again, not that he's been overworked this year, but you, know, you go from being with the, the Rockies where you can't pitch to the minors, and then all of a sudden you're pitching in an Orioles uniform. 2 1 delivery on the way, and that almost caught him. And the Orioles want to extend him. They're looking at Castro as a starter. So anytime they can get him in and he can be effective, good news, get those innings up. So when they look at him next year, there's always the possibility of being a starter. Yeah, and then uh, you get the, the great performances like against the Tigers where Chris Tillman got knocked around, so he comes in, gives up what one hit in six innings. And he not only pitches well, but he also saves the bullpen. Three ball, one strike count, runner off first base, rips that one, that's gonna go down the line fair. It'll roll into the corner. Gentry going after. On his way to third, Healy. On his way to second with a double is Chapman. But again, if you get a young pitcher that's not throwing 98 because he's got to throw strikes as he's behind everybody to this team, all these uh, high draft choice fastball hitters, that's where you get yourself in trouble. And again, Chapman, because of the count, you know, again, tremendous strength, and it just hits a seed down into the corner for a sure double. <laughs> Scott running, running beside Healy. Yeah. Getting his running in. So Roger McDowell is going to try to gain a little time here as the bullpen will scurry about. They're just getting somebody up down there. Castro with one away, two on. Orioles will get Michael Gibbons up. But as you see, he has not yet thrown a pitch. Yeah, he pitched uh, what, a inning of a third last night and uh, actually was very efficient. They went with Brock in the eighth, and that's where Brad got in trouble. So again, the last thing you want to do, and hitting in two thirds actually last night, and then all of a sudden he has to get loose again. So 
He'll probably lose him for tomorrow. He had to pitch a day tonight. Bruce Maxwell, a base hit, has struck out twice. The catcher, Colom, is ready to go in the bullpen. Two on, big at bat, right here. Even with a 9-3 ball game, only one down. The left-hander Maxwell with runners at second and third. It's nine hits on the board now for the A's. So this has been a highly offensive game. They just uh, have struggled a bit to get the big hit. Left seven on base so far. Two more on here. They stranded the ten in the first game that the Orioles won seven to two. Pitch on the way. Breaking ball. Stopped. Castillo had a box that one. Didn't go around. Maxwell with an RBI chance. In fact, the base hit here would score a couple. Lead runner Healy with a single and the double by Chapman. Delivery on the way to him, taken and missed. So a two ball, one strike count. Maxwell's not had a lot of chances here in his time. With a big club this year. With these opportunities. Yeah, yeah, right. 31 at bats. Yeah. So right here, I mean, he doesn't have to get a base hit. He'd like to because it would keep the, the inning going. Fly ball of any depth gets another run in. He'll take it, and that's wow. going to miss. And a walk, he'll take even more. Yeah, very close pitch right there. Well, yeah, again, you know, the Orioles, uh, because Castro does have options, Tyler Wilson would, you know, pitched eight shutout innings. He's had four out of five quality uh, starts, so he could come back and you know, certainly from time to time is assuming the long, the long inning rolls. Runners off, second and third, ball in the air to center field. And he got a run in. Adam Jones will make the catch, tagging up his Healy. Also moving over to third base is Chapman. RBI sack fly Maxwell, and it's 9-4. But importantly for the Orioles, there are two down. Yeah, to see you get another out. I mean, you're looking for four more to maintain your lead. So a runner at third with two away. Marcus Simeon, the shortstop, is 0 for 2 in a walk. Batting in the nine spot for the A's. Maxwell gets RBI number 14, and this is 45th game. Chapman off third base. Delivery on the way to Simeon, and that's a way for a ball. And the name that's disappeared, Chris Tillman. Well, there he is, and it was a long man. You know, and Buck said, trying to win games. And that does, I don't think that he, I don't think he was alluding to the fact he didn't think Chris could come in and help him. It's just you need the right situation. And then you don't really don't want to have the right situation. It's been so long, yeah, yeah. with no work except on the sideline for Chris. And even that is hard. You can't do simulated games because then you're not ready to be able to pitch that night. In the air, the other way, and he's going to get a base hit and an RBI and a big one. So with two down, Simeon takes it the other way. He'll drive in a run. Chapman will score. Two runs in here in the eighth inning. And it forces Buck Showalter to come out and do exactly what he did. Well, it's always a gamble when you have a guy that, you know, really probably in the, the course of his whole career has pitched less than 300 innings. And you're hoping that, and help that he'll come in and make his pitches. And that wasn't the case tonight. Simeon gets his 16th RBI, 9 5 game.
second consecutive night. 15 pitches last night, inning actually an inning and a two thirds, so very efficient. You had a double play to get out of the one inning, and then a pretty, pretty simple inning. So again, not a lot of pitches. Uh, you know, having a great year. Fastball slider changeup pitcher with the ability to strike people out. Done a nice job with inherited runners. Top of the order, Boog Powell. In his debut with the A's, walked and scored in the first. He's had a base hit, struck out twice. Runner on at first base, there are two down. Powell will take it up high for a ball. So the Orioles, O'Day, Castro, and now Givens coming out of the bullpen. And uh, Britain's going to get up the throw since could be a save situation. Pitch on the way by Michael. Ooh, home plate. Umpire Nick Lentz took that one. Right on the left shoulder. Ooh. You know, they wear that inside protector, and you can see it. You know, you have a little shoulder pad you can see right there. Trainer coming out to. Wow. Again, I'm not sure it actually have to, has to hit anything other than even the padding. I would imagine it would really hurt. This is one of those concussion examinations going on right now. That bounce shoulder, neck, and off. The crew chief, Sam Holbrook, is down at third base. Comes in. They want to make sure trainer out as well. Well, when I came up and uh, you know, we were actually talking about two or three weeks ago about, you know, why don't they go back to that? They had that big balloon, but maybe and they'd hold the American League umpires would have that. National League umpires would have the you know, similar protection as they have now. But it's not only that, it's also the concussion protocol that you talked about. It's so easy to get hit in the mask if you're umpiring. So Powell with a one ball, one strike count. He's got some power. Pitch on the way to him. That'll be taken away. Givens, two ball, one strike count. Top of the order, the A's have turned it over. So even if they don't get any more here, they'll have the middle of the order due up in the ninth inning. They have scored two runs here in the eighth, doing it so far in three hits. Pitch on the way to Powell. Check swing there for a strike. Yeah, I don't know if he was purposely taken, but you know, certainly makes Michael Gibbons throw a strike with a four run lead. But the last thing you want and you're seeing it right here is that in a nine to three lead after six innings so day pitches well in the seventh that you had to. Get your closer up. That seems going to be the case. Two two delivery on the way to him. Down he goes unfortunately for the Orioles didn't hit him. So a three ball two strike count. He's bench walking around a little bit as they continue hoping. Right at that back foot. Now 51st game. I mean you can see Brad Brock look a little fatigued. Maybe Gibbons his control off a little bit. Runner goes, foul back. Now it doesn't always uh, I mean it doesn't always show up as being wild. It's just you know, more pitches, maybe a little less velocity. More pitches in the middle of the plate. And again, Michael Gibbons, he's not, a, I mean, he's got a changeup, but he's not a finesca. It's about a river. Come after, come after you. Pitch on the way, runner goes, and he gets him. Up and in with a fastball, a big strikeout, a couple of runs, three hits, one left. Orioles up 9-5.
against the A's. Jeremy Hellickson on the mound against Kendall Graveman. Masson two's got it. 3:30. O's extra presented by Jeep. Game coverage will be at four. All the access you need right here on Masson. Ninth inning. Yeah, Daniel Galom uh, comes back on. We saw him the first night. Fast. I mean, actually pitched well. Had a really good curveball, slider, fastball. A little bit of a changeup. So he's done a nice job for him. And came over from the Dodgers organization. It's a little bit high for your first number. But over one out of four. Glum goes to work here in the ninth inning. The Orioles love to add one or more. That one all the way to the backstop. Greg Gentry getting an opportunity at the plate. Craig came on as a defensive replacement in the outfield. He's sitting in Trumbo's spot. Trumbo had a double, single, scored a run, two for four in the ball game for Mark. Delivery by the left hander that's going to go off the glove Chapman up just got a piece of it. He turns and he'll get too easily. You the know Gentry's I, I, on with a double. Yeah Gary I asked him today I said I, you know I don't know I mean I, I, I thought you were fast when you played for the Rangers because you'd come in play defense for steel bases play against left handed pitching I said you got it you had to run track and he said oh yeah ran 100 meters 200 meters I was a broad jumper I also did high jumping. And I and he said I also played baseball. I said the same time. He said, "Oh yeah." He said we had the state finals down in Arkansas in the morning, and there's a nice effort right there by Chad, but can't he flags it down? And when he does, it becomes a double. But he said we won the state championship in track in the morning, and then the state championship in baseball on the same day. Good day. Yeah. Pitch taken outside for a ball. Runner at second base. The Orioles, an amazing 16th chance. With a runner in scoring position in this game. Chris Davis has had an RBI way back in the first inning, one for three, and he has walked. Entry on at second base. The Orioles now with 16 hits in the game. Pitch is going to go into the middle. Yes, base hit and an RBI. So Chris Davis gets his second run batted into the ball game, and it is 10 5 Orioles. Well, baby steps, you know, single early on. It's a little slider in the middle of the plate, hits a line drive back up the middle. So again, you're always trying to add runs. They add two, you add one here. And the inning's just starting. So trying to get a slider to the outside corner, and it hangs in the middle of the plate, and he hooks it between the uh, second baseman and shortstop playing in the shift. Well, Chris Davis making it pay off. Now Castillo will get another chance. He's not been able to extend his hit streak, which is still at 10. 0 for 3. Fielder's choice, RBI, and a run scored. That all coming back in the first inning. Orioles high in hits is 20. It was in 13 innings in a ball game at Detroit. Nine inning ball game, 17. Pitch on the way. Orioles have equaled that. They've got 17 hits up on the board in this one. They had 17 twice against Boston at Boston in April and again in May and then the 17 against the Tigers. August 6. So fourth time this year they've had 17 hits in a the game. Yeah, there's the hook and that's a good one. No Castillo out in front of it and a one ball two strike count. Castillo then record due up. Coulomb on for Josh Smith who worked an inning gave up a hit a strikeout and a walk first run the Orioles have scored since the fourth inning down to third base on a big hop Chapman one relay Lowry and they'll get the double play. So Castillo hits into the double play. Yeah, again, uh, he doesn't run well. You know, just get it to your second baseman, which he does, and then you can see Lowry get out of the way on the slide. So they turn two. And here's Joey Rickert with a couple of runs scored, two singles, two for three, hit by a pitch, popped out his last time up, and the pitch. Cologne will come inside for a ball. 
10 runs 17 hits for the Orioles five runs 10 hits for the A's. Delivery on the way to record and that'll be a strike in the inside corner at the knees. Yeah Joey doing a nice job against the left handed pitchers as he did last year at over 300. Wow and that one got a little bit coming out of the hand to get it right underneath it. Count goes to two and one. Bases are empty here. Joey will take the pitch for a strike. A's have given up as many as 20 hits in a ball game this year. That came against Washington. It's their high. Orioles three shy of that number. And record fights off. Pitch inside. Keeps the at bat alive. Two ball, two strike count on Joey. Show Walter just meandering here, wanting this game to be over. The A's have kept battling back, and he's had to go to the bullpen a little more than he wanted. He'll probably stay with Gibbons, nobody else warming up for the Orioles. Which is exactly what he didn't want to do. Yeah. Make him unavailable tomorrow. In the air to left field, Rickard got good wood on it. Davis going back at the wall. That one's going to take a hop, and it will get by him. On his way to thirds, deciding better of it, Rickard goes back to second base. So Joy gets a double and didn't miss a home run by much. Yeah, a little hanging uh, slider or breaking ball, and yeah, it looks like it's a spike curveball. It stays up and they're, they're easy to hit. Davis runs out of room and then it goes right by. It appears that normally the ball doesn't carry here at night, but that ball carried well and it, he just misplayed it. Even though it was going to be a double either way. The Orioles have 18 hits. Is that a new high for the season? And here is Beckham. He's got a chance at a four hit night. Two doubles, single, two RBIs, two runs scored. Tim will take the pitch down low. Looking for his third career four hit ball game. Look at those numbers seven for 16. And Beckham goes to right field. Pender going back. Pender not going to get it. And it'll go over the wall for a ground rule double. And he's got a four hit game. Tim Beckham goes in with another RBI as Rickert will score. And it's 11 to 5 on the Orioles' 19th hit. Yeah, just an amazing run. And again, uh, you know, it's up just up and away. And, uh, you know, I'll just shoot it the other way. Triples, doubles, home runs. Great approach. And again, for a little guy, and of course, you know, he's listed at 6'1, 205. So I guess that's not that little. Amazing bat speed. So a three RBI ball game, a four hit ball game. And Manny Machado waves at a pitch down and in. Manny has had a double. He has won for five. That came in the first inning. He picked up an RBI and he did score. Manny 256 off the left handers, 252 off righties coming into the ball game. Big lead for Beckham. Pitch will be taken up high. Coulomb's going to finish this one out one way or the other. They're not going to go any deeper into that bullpen. 11 runs on 19 hits. Orioles have left eight on base. Lots of base runners. The pitch on the way. Colon will be up and away. They've been held off the board from the fourth inning through this ninth inning. Not able to shut them down here. Two runs in. Back him off second base. Coulomb's delivery over the top. Dropped it in. 
Manny with that double early. You know, base hit here salvages the evening. I'm going to get up six times. Might as well get two hits. Got a couple of RBIs. If he can get one in this at bat, he'll have two in the game, and he will. Yeah, there you Base go. hit into right field. Pender charging. They're going to bring him on home. Throw will come into the plate, not in time, and Manny gets a base hit and an RBI. And the Orioles put up their 20th hit and their 12th run. Yeah, Colomb, uh, he gets uh, knocked around. And again, the approach by Manny. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Scott Emerson, yeah, pitching coach. He started the year as the bullpen coach. And Kurt Young was let go because they didn't pitch well back in June. Here's another hanging curveball. And you know, very hittable if you use this approach. Shoots it into right. And then it's such a big outfield. Beckham with good speed gets a good jump, and Pinder, even though he makes a nice throw, not even close. Everybody in the Orioles lineup has contributed in this ball game, getting on, scoring, driving him in. Jonathan Scope is part in this one. He has picked up a base hit, walked, hit by a pitch. Officially, he's one for three. So he's had three hits, 12 at bats in the set. Manny Machado on at first base. Orioles up 12 to 5. And he will take the pitch for a strike. Yeah, even Castillo goes 0 for 5, uh, gets the RBI on the fielder's choice early on. Back in the first, seven run first inning. Left hander's delivery to him. That'll be rolled foul. Orioles started it out with the big seven runs on eight hits in the first, and they're going to wrap it up with at least three more here in the ninth inning. And they've had five hits so far in this inning. And the Orioles again tomorrow are going to have a chance to get back to 500. It'll be 58 59 for the Sunday game. Overhand breaking ball that's going to miss down low. One ball, two strike count. Manny stays at first. Yeah, long, long night for Bruce Maxwell He's doing the catching. And the other thing, Gary, and we never really had a chance to talk about it. Sean Manaya came in four and zero against the American League East and just gets knocked around. And only gets one out of the first. And we'll take the loss. Yeah. Dylan Bundy, the starter for the Orioles, three runs, seven hits over six. He's going to get a win. Dylan will be 12 and eight. And Iowa will be eight and seven. 2 2 delivery on the way. Scope fights that one off. Yeah, Cologne keeps throwing those high breaking balls and hit them all over the ballpark in this inning. And uh, it's not going to change if he stays up in the zone with it. Manny going nowhere at first base. Scope will follow back again. Orioles have had 25 base runners in this ball game. Double the number of runners that uh, Oakland's had in the game. Plus one. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that's going to be way inside. Alone can't find a steady on that strike zone, and the count goes three and two. Well, he looks like he really relies on the, uh, the breaking ball. You know, the slider gets him the most swings and misses. But that Chris Davis took care of that and hit a line drive into. Right field for an RBI. So trying to finesse his way through this inning. Manny will be running on the 3 2 with two down. Cologne's delivery, and he'll get the strikeout. So that will end it, but the Orioles are going to add three, three outs away from a win as they increase their lead at 12 5.
baseball on mass and brought to you by Southwest. Yes, to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. And by Navy Federal, proudly serving the armed forces and their families for over 80 years. Federally insured by NCUA. You're looking at the Orioles offense on the highway. That's about the way it's gone tonight. 12-5. 12 20 and 0 for the Orioles. Givens will stay on, try and finish this ball game up. Pender, Lowry, Chris Davis will be due up for the A's. Pender's taken an 0 for 4, 3 for 11 in the series, and a strike at the knees on the outside corner. Yeah, another little fact that again, uh, you know, played all kinds of baseball in college against Trey Mancini, also summer leagues. His dad pitched in the Orioles organization. Left handed pitcher pitch up at Hagerstown. Big Oriole fan growing up, growing up as you mentioned uh, in uh, Virginia, not too far from Oriole Park. Gibbons delivery to him and uh, hack on a pitch did get a piece of, fouled it off down and in. And a one go, one ball, two strike count on Chad Pinder. Yeah, the only way you learn, and certainly sometimes it can be uh, very difficult, is to get your at bats. You can see these guys love to hit the fastball. You got to make a mistake with the breaking ball, otherwise, you can pitch to them. Bender will chop that one to short. Beckham on a short hop, not going to get it. They ate him up. Had to play it or did play it on a middle hop. And Bender will reach. Yeah, again, I, you know, it's one of those plays where it's hit up the middle. You know, if you try to come get it, it might get by you. So you're hoping you're going to get not a good hop. You're just going to be able to catch it. So there's that short hop you talked about. And when that happens, and usually I mean you know short stops usually have the luxury. You know they can't drop the ball of picking their hop. Right here he goes retreats trying to catch it on the run, and I'm sure they'll talk about it. And if you're going to make a, I don't know if it scored an error or a base hit because it wasn't an easy play. They'll discuss Single. that. Yeah, so that was an error, second of the series. One on a throw and one on the fielding play. So a runner on at first base, and the pinch hitter is Dustin Garneau. Garneau hitting for Lowry with a runner on at first. Yeah, they picked him off of, on uh, waivers from Colorado. Set number 11. Let's keep piling these numbers up. 17 runs, 31 hits. Shattered bat. One relay scope and they get the double play. Yeah, well, you got the had all kinds of middle infielders because that's what Michael Gibbons was before he was referred to a pitcher. So he pounces on it. And then again, uh, gets it down there very, very quickly. Take a look right here. I mean, right off the fist, there's the broken bat, head somewhere down to third base. Perfect throw. Scope with a, as good an arm as anybody in baseball. So you can see running right here because they're not really holding him. So it gets a big lead, but the throw perfectly and allows Jonathan Scope to clear the, the pinder coming in, trying to break up the double play. And Buck Showalter's happy about that because it keeps the pitch count down for Michael Gibbons. Two down, nobody on here in the ninth inning. Here's Chris Davis. Tried to get him back in the game in the first inning with his 30 second home run. Good for a couple of RBIs. Also had a base hit later, two for four. And the A's pitchers just unable to do anything in this ball game against the Orioles. And that's going to be foul back. Orioles have the shift on in the infield. One out away from victory number 58, 58 and 59. It'll be the Orioles record. The A's will drop to 51 and 66 on the year. Gibbons delivery to him. And that will just miss outside. Chris Davis. Dylan Bundy came into the uh, ball game up among the leaders. As far as the winners were concerned, he had the fifth most wins in the American League. He'll add another, get number 12 here tonight. And that one's going to be fouled away. Gibbons up. 17 pitches thrown coming on to get the strikeout in the eighth inning and now the two outs here after surrendering one hit.
Tim Beckham with a big night for the Orioles. 12 game hit streak. Another big RBI night for Adam Jones. Pitch taken up high. Adam with three RBIs and a three hit game. Let's look all over the place for contributions yeah. in this one because everybody's had a part of it. Yeah, you get all these runs and you go back to the fourth uh, when they've closed it what the seven to two is uh, Davis is going to walk. And it keeps it going. Yeah, yeah that two out base hit by Adam Jones. Yeah. Gave him an extra two runs and they were able to add. And it's a painful part of the game right now for Mike Showalter. Uh, the score is that you know beautiful thing. But he's watching Gibbons and he doesn't want to throw he doesn't want him to throw one more pitch. It just keeps going here. Well, that's why he was so happy. I mean he can't believe it. I mean nine to three lead and you're you know you actually had your closer up in this game. Yep. So Gibbons trying to find that final out. And the pitch way inside, and he just doesn't have it. And yeah, well, again, I mean, you know, there is a fatigue factor. We saw it with Brad Brock pitch two consecutive days. And don't think Buck Showalter is not saying, well, okay, we had to expand our roster, and what did I do with Donnie Hart? I had to send him out. And, you know, he'd be, this would be a perfect game for him because you'd have an extra guy in your bullpen. And that would allow maybe some of your more, I mean, not that Donnie hadn't done a good job because he has, your mainstays would be a little more rested. And that one's going to miss. That's going to bring Wellington Castillo out to the mound. Ryan Healy with a two for four. He has scored a run, couple of singles. DH for the A's in the ball game. Orioles up 12 to five, but it's a grueling ending. Yeah. And what Blyers pitched back-to-back -back game, so you know, we want to get him up again. I don't think so. Healy on a 2-0. That's there for a strike. Fire in the middle. Zach on the left did get up earlier. Just toss a little bit. 2-1 delivery. Two ball, two strike count from Gibbons. Yeah, that's a pitch number 23 and. Uh... Not wild, but I mean, 11 strikes, 12 balls. So usually a little bit more adept at being in the strike zone. You know, a lot of pitches, a lot of innings when you get to this time of the year. Runner at first base, Chris Davis. Hack back upstairs. Healy will keep it alive. Two delivery to him. Ryan Healy takes it and the count goes to three and two. Full count delivery with a runner going in the air to center, Adam Jones. And to the mercy of it all, that's the ball game. So here in the ninth inning no runs a hit no errors and a base runner left on three hours 20 minutes time of the game the Orioles win it Bundy's 12 and 8 Anaya takes the loss he is 8 and 7 Orioles have a 2 1 edge with the chance to take the series tomorrow game four Jeremy Hellickson will be on the mound against Kendall Graveman Masson 2 3 30 O's extra presented by Jeep then our game coverage will be at four Tom and Rick will take a look back where some uh, three and a half hours ago the Orioles had a big first inning they would get them the lead that they would not surrender in this ball game. This has been a Masson presentation.